Welcome to Shardcast, the Brandon Sanderson podcast. We're a bunch of mega fans giving you the news, discussion, and of course, a whole lot of opinions about Brandon's works and the Cosmere. I'm Eric, and joining me is David. Hi, I am Windrunner on the forums and not used to going second, so I was I know. just hanging out. It's new, yeah. <laughs> uh, also joining us is Evgeny. Hi, I am used to going second, and so this is also weird to me. Yeah, and I don't know also, why I switched it this time, to be honest. <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, but I have heard the cries of anguish from you, dear listeners and viewers. Yes. That there has been no show and tell from me lately. Yes. Uh, and on I have the felt Bob your episode, pain. I, I, we just had a hard cutoff where I needed to go to a doctor's <laughs> appointment. And so we, we needed to be efficient to get through 30 pages of words of Brandon. Okay. Uh, so I just wanted to minimize tangents. That's all. It's not that okay. I'm trying to hide it from you. There, there are no doctor's appointments today. No, there's ben not. Ben probably has a time by which he needs to go to bed, yeah. but that is not important. I should be all right. <laughs> uh, Excellent. So I would like to show off something that some of you may have seen because it's been online for a while. This is a... Ah, oh, yes, that. So this is, uh, for those looking at the video, if you're just a listener, I'm sorry, go look at the video. Um, this <laughs> is a dust jacket. Review. <laughs> uh, a custom dust jacket that was made for the beta readers of Rhythm of War by the excellent Botanica. Yeah, I got one. And of those. so you can you can see uh, Navani here, and then on this side you can see Rolaine and Venli, both of which are excellent. Looks great. And then in the back, some uh, <laughs> <laughs> some glamorous photos of brandon peter and isaac <laughs> i was like who's the third one i was like oh that's that's great it's but uh it turned it's, out really nice yeah 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 it's great i have mine over there so I it should... is fantastic art and a lot of fun i should have got one the the oathbringer beta one was a lot more meme so i just didn't get it yeah it was yeah. like a lego thing wasn't it yeah cool everyone knows all about that uh, oh i'm argent <laughs> <laughs> also joining us is Ben. Hello, I'm I'm used to going forth, so I'm I'm all good. Yeah, it's it's all good over here. It's I so weird it, when was... I'm not first. Let me tell you. Yeah, I know. When, when you have to, <laughs> uh, when you have to host. When we're doing a swap. It's yeah. weird. It's so weird. I have this to show off for my show and tell. I showed it off during Over Lady Reads, but I thought I'd show it off here as well. This is a little card box that Paleo made for me. Oh wow, that is um, really cool. It's got like a little uh, thing inside. Oh yeah, because because he he has the laser cutter thing. Yeah, so it's got yeah, a little yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. cherry cherry on the front. He does um, really like he, that. He made me a custom uh, shoe Magic the Gathering <laughs> card. Um, <laughs> oh, excellent. it's a consumable. <laughs> consumable. Yeah. It gives nothing and it says made of sturdy leather instead of spongy cake might cause indigestion. <laughs> <laughs> But I was Excellent. just going to show that off. Since we're showing off Botanica stuff, I've got all my uh, got all my bookmarks that are all Botanica, which were great, which came with some Kickstarter. I want to say the Black Piper Kickstarter. Yeah, um, I think so. Something like that. yeah. <laughs> That's been so long ago at the stage that I, I do not remember <laughs> what was involved with that. Uh, well, welcome to Shardcast. I'm Chaos, and uh, you, you guys wanted show and tell, and so you get some... <laughs> people blabbing about stuff in in jokes that you don't know about so <laughs> i hope you enjoyed that so stick around and also catch up with our backlog so you can also be in the know <laughs> yep and stuff stick around with honor's truest search yeah yeah <laughs> um Thanks, guys. I can't imagine why I, I get annoyed with the show and tell sometimes and uh, why I joke about people clicking off the video when uh, it's like, hey, in jokes, memes. Hey. But <laughs> look, I, I hope you listening liked it. And if you didn't put a comment below. <laughs> yeah. If you if you clicked away from the video, tell us. Yeah. And it, and if yeah. You're audio, I'm sure they'll, they'll be listen. hearing this. <laughs> yeah. If they've clicked away from the video, they'll hear yeah, that. Yeah. 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 yeah, and stay strong, audio listeners. Do not watch the video. <laughs> no, 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 no. Go, go to the video. Don't skip the ad. Watch the entire ad. Okay, that'd be great. Thanks. Uh, all right, guys. Today, rhythm of war spoilers, Cosmere spoilers. I don't know what we're gonna talk about, but we we kind of have 
a bit of a big topic, surge binding and the surges. So why don't why don't we just open with a classic 17 shard question? What is surge binding? <laughs> uh, we don't know. End of episode. Oh, okay. <laughs> Bye, guys. Rasharans definitely don't know. So Rashar, yeah. <laughs> so I, I have to complain that Brandon says, oh, yeah, well, Rasharans basically call every magic surge binding. I'm like, <sighs> I thought I this book simplified things where the fused are surge binders, and I thought that was good until Brandon totally ruined it. So, I know. <laughs> Okay, like, I I would like to take a take a stab at at this. Okay, surge well, binding. Uh, well, no, I will just recover more slowly because the suppressor is active. This this podcast going great. <laughs> <laughs> um, surge binding is is obviously one of the many manifestations of investiture throughout the Cosmere in the same way that elements or hemolurgy Don't is you mean invested art i do and they are synonymous also arcana do we um, know that those are synonymous arcana is not the synonymous arcana is not synonymous but okay okay arcana is like a specific thing right no 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 arcana no, is the general arcana generalized. Is the general yeah. yeah that's so how is that different from an invested art invested uh, arts are like codified and like kind of like a formal thing like i don't know one if you is call a the subset AVR of the other art. therefore they're not the same all Ar- invested Arcana arts are is Arcana, everything. But not all Arcana are invested arts. Exactly. Yeah. Let's circle back to that later. Okay. So- <laughs> we, I literally edited a show where we talked about this literally yesterday, Evgeny. Granted, you guys are getting this uh, several weeks after Wobs 2, but we literally talked about this. Okay, so anyway, <laughs> manifestations of investiture. It's a magic system, right? Yes. yes. And so mm-hmm. it it has many different effects and nuances yes and i think obviously we we know that the core of surge binding is are are the 10 surges right gravitation adhesion illumination whatever and so i think that any expression of magic that that manipulates these surges through a bond can be qualified as surge binding ask a (laughs) follow-up yes do you so would you not count the fused as surge binders or do you believe the fused themselves have some sort of bond that we don't understand so the way i have been treating the fused is so essentially all of the odium kind of expressions of magic that we have seen so far on screen i am treating as Odium is, or odious investiture, is staking the role of a bond. And so the magic is expressed in a similar... So let's, let's take the, those ones of the heavens and windrunners, right? So both of them can fly. And skybreakers, but who cares about skybreakers? Not okay. me. Alex. Alex cares about Alex skybreakers. Alex cares about skybreakers. <laughs> yeah. Very much. <laughs> So windrunners can manipulate the surge of gravitation and they can perform the, the basic lashing. And what allows them to do that is their bond ultimately to honor, but more directly to a spren of honor. And it is kind of this melding of spirit webs, melding of, of souls that unlocks this power for them. And as a side effect, they can they can use Stormlight to power this ability. They can, if they can get access to, use other investitures as well. Mm-hmm. Right? You can conceivably use Breath. You can conceivably use Void Light to power this. Uh, sure, specifically, right. we see this with Venli, right? Sure. So I think that what the Fused are doing is that they are manipulating the surge of gravitation in almost the same way. And so they are they're fitting in that same like category of powers. Uh, like gravitation is the magical effect here that is going on. Except they're not producing a basic lashing like a windrunner would. The, the the codified expression of the magic is different. And they are producing that because the odious investiture in their soul grants them that ability. 
you not think they can do basic lashings? Because I feel like they definitely can. They and can. There's not like any sort of mechanical difference aside from perhaps how long, you know, the, the, well, yeah, the yeah, that, mechanics that, that, relating to void light, I guess. No, that's what I'm trying to say. Like, it doesn't behave exactly the same way as it would with Windrunners mm-hmm. because they can't stack them as much and they like accelerate more slowly and things like that. But it's it's similar, but not the same. And so the thing that the fused quote unquote light weavers, the masked ones can do is similar, but not the same as light weavers. Yes. The deepest ones behave similarly to uh, wheel shapers and stone wards, but it's not the same. So I'll, all, I think all of the fused brands are going to end up manifesting powers that are similar, but not the same to the radiance. As I think where you were going with this was you were talking about how it was granted from the bond with a um, spren. And I thought you were going to say that it's granted to the fuse with their bond with odium is where I thought you were going with that. Uh, I think that's because that's how I see it is, is the way that uh, generally it seems odium can like grant things and take things away like new rhythms or uh, did he take L's surge, uh, surge binding or did he just take his rhythms? Unknown. I rhythm. I, okay, just yeah. rhythms. As far yeah, as we know. As far as we and know. So I, I, okay. um, so I kind of figure that the, the, because it, Odium apparently can do this thing where it gives people th- certain things and takes them away, and one of the things he gave the fused is surge binding. It's kind of how I've always seen it. I, let me take an alternative tack, because I think like there's not like a huge difference between what we're saying or the way we're thinking about it, but there is <laughs> yeah. some. Uh, yeah, you know, Excellent. as always. <laughs> Welcome um, to the show. You knew what you were getting into, clicking on yeah, surges yeah, and well, <laughs> This is the thing we know the least about, aside from Dawn Charts. That's, but, that's yeah. true. And we, and we also nitpicked Intent Command a lot, so oh, in yeah. that episode. Yeah. yeah. What, what I think more is that any surge binder, like our Radiance, could probably learn to do anything that Fuse can do that isn't because of some characteristic about how they get light or how Void Light behaves. Like, I don't understand if the acceleration thing or, like, the fact that it constantly, like, lives within them is part of Void Light or if that's part of what the Fused have. Like, that seems pretty ambiguous to me still. But I think, like, Bentley could learn to slip through Axie. But what the Surge have going, the Fused have going for them is they are their own spren. And so they themselves, they exist. There's a great quote from Rabonial about how, like, they kind of exist as the Surge. And so I think, like, maybe even if you progress far enough in your bond where you and your spren are becoming closer and closer to being one being, you could get to some of these things. But I think it's really just more a side effect of the fused being their own power, like being their own source of the powers as opposed to it being a separate or a slightly oh, different Oh, right, because there's not a separate okay. spirit web in a sense. It's not being channeled through something. It's just... I, I like that. Like yeah, it, it's, I like it's that. already like completely suffused their soul, I guess. Whereas, like, in a Radiant, you have to, like, progress and, like, you're, you're never, like, exactly the same. Like, they, they get more intermingled, whereas the Fused is just, it's all 100% all the time. Fused mm-hmm. are, like, level 10 or 10th mm. oath, like, that's, whatever. That's really yeah. interesting, and I, I like that because I, I'm not 100% sure if Venli could learn to, same. like, stone shape like the deepest ones, per se. Mm-hmm. But I think that is an interesting and totally reasonable logical framework. Uh, I, I, I like that quite a lot, actually. Mm-hmm. And I okay. do think the Fuse can do basically most things the Radiance can. Like, I've seen some people seem to think that, like, they can't, yeah, like, actually shape stone in the same way Bentley does, but that is not the case. They definitely can still move and squish rock and stuff. Like, Oh, did they, just did they be do that? Above- I, th- I believe in Oathbringer, there was a fuse that was playing with a piece of rock like it was putty. Oh, and yeah, just kind I think of like so. sitting yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, I don't wish right. and moving it around. I, can- I have not been able to find that sense. So if someone in the comments finds that, I will. Be yeah, no, pleased, but, but I remember you talking thing. about it after Oathbringer. So I know you're not making yeah. that up. That This isn't the first time you've mentioned this. I, I think, think when when they were moving like Venli from village to village or something, or on the way to Kolinar. It's either a Venli chapter or a Moash chapter because it's like yeah. well, we don't know a lot about the fuse still, and we're, I, was, I just remember like looking intently to see what they could do, and I was like, oh, one's doing the stone thing. Okay, here we go. Mm. 
Okay. Okay. So I've been treating the way that the fuse surge bind. Um, oh yeah, just to say as well, the the fuse surge bind they don't void bind. Yeah, at that least the be. sibling <laughs> yes. calls it that, and that's what like they call them yeah. energy uh, energy enemy energy surge bending. binders. <laughs> uh, so yeah. I I trust the sibling is correct in that sense. Uh, Same, yeah, even though. Rashans would call yeah. anything surge binding, but I think that I'm yeah. very confident that the fused are surge binding in Yeah. Yeah. Um I've always seen the way that the fuse surge binding manifests is different to the way that radiance manifests. And so I don't think a a wheel shaper or a stone wood would be able to eventually slip between the axi like the deepest ones. Um just like I don't think that one of the masked ones could creates external illusions like the Lightweavers do. I think they can only... The Rabonial says that they can own... Their, their surges are inward-facing, whilst Radiants are outward-facing. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, Or a pull. Oh, hey! <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Um, and so that's why, that's why um, the flying ones can fly all the time, because their, their gravitation goes inwards. Um, right, and, and it's to- lashing an object is a rare lashing. A rare lashing, yeah. So it's, it's like it's they still can do it, but it's it like costs them because whilst oh. when they're when it's internal, they can bask in the light of odium, yeah, uh, indefinitely. Re- yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I was gonna get, I was getting the quote up. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's almost it's almost as if when they use the surges internally, as you say, they they hook directly into odium, and so they get this whole infinite power source thing. Mm-hmm. But yeah. when they try to use them externally, then they have to work with like um, a finite uh, supply of investiture. I, yeah. I I agree with that way of viewing about it, but I would say I don't feel like they're getting like if a fuse lashes itself that he's drawing that power from Odium, but if he lashes Moash, he's using his own. I think that's more just like they can hold on to Void Light inside them and keep using it forever and ever. But if they put it into something outside of themselves, it dissipates just like other hmm. light does. Because they because they have a gem part, right? So that that was yeah. kind of the core thing. Void light leaks less out of a a gem than stormlight, but also unlike humans, fused they they just have a gem heart, so it they they can hold it indefinitely, which is kind of a reference to actually the prologue of Way of Kings, where Zeth is like, yeah. oh, void bringers can hold light forever. Stormlight. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Uh, no, but uh, although I will point out that Venley, as a singer, never displays any ability to like use surges internally forever because, or like hold on to light super long because she's got a gem heart. So yeah, I think there is still probably something some else. nonsense there. Right? Um, I mean, yeah, Venley's Venley's a, a regal radiant, not a fuse. Whoa, whoa, so whoa. It's, oh, it's... yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I was gonna yeah, no. criticize what you said, but no, that's cr- entirely correct. <laughs> <laughs> it's too complicated. Like if she had a corrupted yeah. friend, it would just be. We would just oh, be like, oh, we can't, imagine. we can't get anything out of that. <laughs> all, yeah. the, all the check boxes. Yeah. So I think we we were gonna read part of this chapter thirty one where Raboniel tells Venley about the surges, but it, it's kind of actually totally awesome. So we're we're just gonna go into wob mode and we're gonna. We're 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 going to read this aloud, and uh, it's a little <laughs> yeah. long. So, but but it's it's a good primer for surge binding and what the hell we're talking about. It, one of my <laughs> favorite chapters, just because like whoa, lore from Fuse, they know what's going on. <laughs> Give me. I have reread this section so many times because you know me, I love the Fuse and Regal stuff. So I've reread yeah. this one section so many times over. Yeah, um, yeah. So we're just backing up a little because we kind of jumped into it. So we're just yeah. we're talking from Fuse and surge binding. Yeah. So. Tell me, Rabonyal said, what about the deepest ones interest what about the deepest ones interest you so? Why do you spend hours staring at them? I find their powers fascinating, Venley said. Best not to lie when she until she had to. Nine brands are fused, Rabonyal said. Nine surges. You know of the surges. The innate forces by which all life, all reality, are connected, lowercase c. <laughs> Gravitation, transportation, transformation. But I thought there were ten. That is human talk, Rabonyal said to Derision. They claim a tenth, of honor alone. Adhesion is not a true surge, but a lie that was presented to us as one. True surges are of both honor and cultivation. Cultivation for life, honor to make the surges into natural law. Things must fall to the ground. 
So they created surges to make that happen. And the surge of these ones, Venli asked, gesturing toward the deepest ones. Cohesion, Raboniel said. The surge of axial connection. That's a capital C there. Yes. <laughs> the, surge that, <laughs> the surge that binds the smallest pieces of all objects to one another. The surge that holds us together. The Makayim can meld their essence into the essences of other things, intermingling their axi. All things are mostly emptiness, though we cannot see that, that it is so. A stone, like a mine, exists to be filled by thought and investiture. Venli hummed to craving. Answers. Finally, answers. I agree, Venli. <laughs> in, in which Venli is all of us. Yes. She, <laughs> thank you. She didn't know what half of any of this meant, but to have one of the fused answer so easily, it excited her. Though Tambor thrummed to caution. The Radiants each have two surges, Venli said. The Fused each have one. So are the Radiants more powerful? Powerful? Is it better to have more abilities, or to have one ability handled, handled expertly? We of the Fused know our surge with an intimacy a Radiant will never know. Humans, they were not created for this world, these surges, or the storms. Light leaks from Fused. Sorry, light leaks from humans like water through fingers. They get flares of great power, but cannot hold what they have. One of the fused can, it, can contain light and bask in it indefinitely. Even a regal such as you knows this power in a lesser way. Most don't know it, but you contain a small amount of void light in your gem heart. You can't use it actively, of course, but you might have felt it inflaming your emotions. As for fused, our dominance over our surge is eternal. Where humans visit, we reign, she gestured towards the deepest ones. Can any Radiant claim to know the stones as they do, melding with rock, mixing their very axi? Radiants are so outwardly focused, they change the world, but ignore themselves. Yes, a Radiant can cast a stone into the sky, but the Shanayim can soar without ever worrying of dropping. So there, there's, there's some pros, but let, let's skip to the next piece of dialogue. If surges are of honor and cultivation, she said, then why do we serve Odium? A dangerous question, Rabonyal said to Derision. You truly are the daughter of traitors, aren't you? I... Don't cover up your ambition, child, Rabonyal said, leading Venli past a line of small snarls scrubbed with little furry creatures scampering underneath in the night. I like it in my servants. Still, there is certain silliness to your question. Which would you rather worship, a god of plants or a god of emotions? She waved to the southeast. Cultivation hides in these very mountains. Somewhere. She is everywhere. But she is also here, alive but frightened. She knows. She is not a god of people, but of creatures. And honor? A god of laws? Again, which would you prefer? A god who knows only how to make a rock to fall to the ground? Or a god who knows us, understands us, feels us as we do? Yes, surges are bound by honor. Yet as you can see, his death can, did not change the world in any appreciative manner. His power binds all things together, but this alone is not what we worship. Worthy of worship. Odium, passion, he will grant us rewards. Wow. I think we've that's yeah, that, the, uh, that is yeah. that is awesome. I oh. yes. thank thank you, so, yeah, Benley, I, for asking questions for us nerds. Yeah. Benley the scholar in action. And I think about these questions and these answers a lot because this is kind of what made me think that the fused get a different version of the search. And it's more inward focused. They, they, they can hold void light, and as long as they're holding the void light, they can do whatever they want with themselves. They can gravitate themselves. They can light weave themselves because it's, it's like all the to do internal. Progression actually on that one fused in the battle with Yasna, like they shaped themselves. It shapes is carapace, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And so, yeah. whilst they can use it externally to do the rare lashing or. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of any other version of them doing something external. I think, I can't think it might be. Right it, it might be possible for the masked ones to make an illusion on someone else, but it might be costly. I don't know. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. I think it's costly for them to do that. Um, and so, yeah, that's that's well, that's the kind of the way I see the fuse surge binding is is different. Yeah. Yeah. I, so, I do see where you're coming from. I just and I do agree that maybe like the radiance might not be able to get there, but I do think if they could hypothetically reach the same level of closeness with their spren as as be, essentially being their own spren, yeah, yeah, then they would be able to reach those. I that is kind of the way I view it. Like maybe there's some weird magical prerequisites to be like some sort of weird surge binder savant, and that would be functionally similar or some BS. I don't know. Maybe not, mm. but I, I do like David's 
fuse their essentially their own spren um because i i think that's very fundamental to how how radiance or how surge how radiance and fuse are different <laughs> mm-hmm. well terminology oh um, what i've been i've been thinking about um something you you said a couple of times ben in that the fused get their own version of the surge and i know what you mean but i think that is inaccurate to say so i don't think the surges themselves change in any way shape or form what changes is different people um or objects in the case of fabrials can access different aspects of the surges and it is in that access that changes manifest or changes enforced right so if you are accessing gravitation through a hell bond then you get this set of powers right whatever whatever this set is and then if you are accessing gravitation through being your own spren so to speak then you get this set of powers and if you're accessing gravitation because you are a spren like an actual spren then you get this very tiny set of powers because you were also not a very invested spren yeah i'm in agreement i mean, I think i think i'm in agreement with that i think we're saying the same thing just with different words mm-hmm. yeah probably yeah, yeah. Um, and I and I wanted to to bring all of this back to there has been a very long kind of standing discussion on on the seventeenth shard or in the wider fandom about what constitutes a magic system. <laughs> yep, uh, <laughs> very true. Yes, indeed. And and obviously we cannot get into all of that here. What is but, an invested art? <laughs> <laughs> but but the, the bit that is relevant, I think, is that you can accomplish the same things or at least similar things by using different magic systems and so the magic system is not the effect right the magic system is defined by your access to the magic and to actually yeah i'll I'll stop there it is defined by your access to the magic and so what's my conclusion here because it doesn't it doesn't vibe with the point we've been trying to make because normally i bring this up in the context of like void binding and i say well here is why void binding is different for all from all of the stuff that we've seen so far it is weird how renarin's like illumination doesn't even look like the masked ones right so that there Mm. is like that like that weird ball of light with the illumination being weird um so the fuse probably are surge binding even with Rashard ba- being bad at names. Yeah. yeah. I well okay, I found a re- like a it is a paraphrased wob and I'm sure some people know about it. But I just like I feel like I see it every time and then I forget about it where Brandon more or less says, "Well, s- void binding has been explored some in the past, but not fully." And I'm like, "Okay, well that just rules out the fuse." For the most like, part, yeah, that, that, like, that's, that's a good point. Yeah, have right. explored their powers. I don't think the fused are gonna, um, unless they have another secret power, like the fact they didn't realize they knew how to use the surges at first. You know, <laughs> like I think I don't think that the fused know there that there are many things the fused don't know about their powers. That I I totally agree. And uh, listeners, if if you forgot what David's referring to with that one line is the Stormfather in Oathbringer chapter thirty eight, where the Stormfather just. Tells people about the fused and the oath pact and things. Uh, there's a line that the fused were dangerous even before they learned to command the surges. So, like that, that's what he's referring to there, which is mm-hmm. crazy. Yeah, uh, thank you for reminding that because I kind of was like, oh yeah, I should mention that. One yeah, because because that- like I always thought that the fused, like that was part of being a fused, but like I guess not. Like I guess Odium gave the powers after the cognitive shadowness, which is just interesting and also interesting in like kind of the like the power fully suffusing their souls that we were kind of talking about i don't know yeah yeah i know obviously we've seen cognitive shadows that come back and they don't like just being a cognitive shadow doesn't necessarily give you access to powers right yes Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah um in many cases it does but it's also like hard to say like returned gain access to powers but in their case it is not actually the returned are not that dissimilar from the fused are they 
because their powers they, they, are internal in a sense yeah 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 like they don't have an active set of powers but they have they're not even abilities like they they become supernatural yeah it's that's 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 weird see i think what i to quickly go back to what you're saying i don't think there's anything about becoming a cognitive shadow which gives you powers like, yeah, like it, it's got to be an it's aspect always, of the investiture, and like the cognitive mm, shadowness is kind of the free part. Like, right? remind yeah. me when Kelsier died, he didn't have access to his Alanancy anymore, right? But he also didn't have a body, which I think was the yeah. main part. Well, I mean, I don't Thieves know if, wouldn't have a body, and Heralds wouldn't have a body because they would have. Oh, dead. Uh, oh, totally agree. I just don't know if he'd come back yeah. with his powers, or if we've ever if we've ever established whether I he think, needed. I to, think we talked about it on our Kelsier cast, which I think should be coming out last week before this episode. I think maybe I'm not sure. <laughs> I think I think we discussed it, and uh, I don't think we knew at all. So, yeah, because we don't. So back backing up a little bit, the surges are this. The surges themselves. What are surges? Like surges are like these fundamental forces. Like Brandon created this with this idea of manipulating fundamental forces. And I've been looking at a, a, a few wobs uh, in the background uh, about, like, part of the surges are, like, a perception thing, almost. And uh, I found one that you actually asked, uh, Brandon Argent, uh, about yeah. what, <laughs> like, could you have different surges, basically? Uh, and, like, given the perception nature of it. But uh, Brandon said it's plausible, although this surges currently was set up in a specific way and then he raffled whether it was honor or aid and alcium who set it up it's, um it's so confusing so, to me because it's like a chicken or an egg thing where we're like did people come up with the idea of surges and that created the powers which is a thing that i kind of thought and then but if brandon's talking about honor setting up the powers did people interact with these powers and then start to call them elements or you know well, forces well, maybe maybe i sh maybe i should read this actually so uh brandon says it's plausible although this was set up in a specific way and he says by honor or aid and alcium brandon raffle on that set up might be the wrong word there were seeds that caused this to happen the way it did argent the surge binding thing brandon yes specifically those influenced what people perceived as fundamental forces. <laughs> I don't know if that actually helps, but... I have yeah. thought some amount of time about this, and, and I'm beginning to wonder whether... Because we've seen the phrase honor bound the surges a couple of times. Yeah. And so... Let me back up just a little bit. <laughs> So, gravitation, gravity. Yes. Let me rephrase that. So, not all gravity in the Cosmere is gravitation. Is let I me let me make sure I'm getting you. Like, <laughs> not all of the force of gravity is a manifestation of the surge of gravitation. Is that what you are trying to say? I I think so. I am I'm so the surges are fundamental in in the sense that they are expression of fundamental forces. They are expression of gravity, of electromagnetism, of the strong and weak nuclear forces. Sort of, but yes. Surge binding is something that is kind of unique to Roshar. I mean, yes, you can surge bind on other planets as well, but surge binding is native to Roshar mm -hmm. or the Roshar yep. system at least and so I think when when different people talk about honor binding the surges or the surges being bound I think what they're talking about is this kind of codification of, of forces that are truly fundamental to the universe or the Cosmere but then Honor comes in, or maybe Aiden Alzian comes in and says, okay, these truly fundamental forces will be limited a little bit in the Rusharan system. They will be bound a little bit in the Rusharan system. So that if a magic user 
from the Rosharan system gains access to, let's say, gravitation, they don't get 100% control over gravity. They gain control over this subset of the fundamental force that is gravity. Hmm. They can I, surge bind gravity. They <laughs> can bind the surge of gravity. <laughs> yeah. I, I'll... In my opinion, I don't think that there's anything truly fundamental about the surges. Like, I think they're I manipulating fundamental forces, but I don't think that gravity works any different in the Rasharan system than it does in Skadriel, or that you could in some way go, gravitation is in effect in Rashar, but gravity is happening in the rest of the Cosmere. Like, I don't think, I think the fused are just flat out wrong about honor binding the surges. Like, gravity clearly existed before honor existed. Like, we... We know these things to be true. And so I think there's a lot more cultural stuff going on here. And that's there isn't. valid. That's, yeah. A lot, I, I think there's a lot of cultural stuff in the surges. Yeah. Um, like to Rasharans, they probably would describe all the other magic in the Cosmere as surge binding. As we, we know that much from Wobbs. Right. But I guess we have to kind of condense what we think as the fans what is surge binding, which is the stuff Radiants do and the stuff that Fuse do. And the Heralds. At least part And the Heralds as well. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes. And probably... Sometimes. I don't know, maybe the floor and the fauna sometimes do it a little bit, because they... No, that Some Fabrials. Oh, well, anyone who bonds Yelignar. Yeah, yeah, anyone yeah, bonds yeah, Yelignar. Yeah, yeah, right, exactly. Yep, yep. There's a lot of asterisks to this, the thing that <laughs> Fused and Radiance do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because, like, circling back a little, when Argent was talking more about how he views magic systems as being like like what you're connected to or who it's coming from i think you said right like you're That's the a source big part of it yeah i always think about it more it's clearly not the fuel as we've learned in this book uh right. but i always think about it as it being the powers like i think that that is what search binding is that it's this 10 set of abilities that people can manipulate and if you're not and if you're manipulating something else like you know like clearly there are parallels like between light weaving here and light weaving elsewhere but i think like a magic system is the set of the powers that it grants and any specific associations there. And I think when the fuse say the surges are bound by honor, that sure would have some cultural aspect, but there is some wiggle room in that it could have been made by Adenalsium creating the universe and then post shattering, like, because all of the the investiture then like got colored in the specific ways. So like that part of Aiden Nalcium that, you know, was doing the binding of these things could have been inherited by honor in a sense. I I do think honor could be responsible for natural law in the Cosmere. Like that's yeah. be what Stella is saying. Like just the very things behaving the way they are supposed to. And that right. kind of predates him, you know, in the same way right. preservation is suffused everywhere. Like he's not actively doing it, but that is what became honor potentially. It was always honor that bound the surges, even if honor was a part of Aiden Elsie. Right, yeah, right, 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 right. Oh man, we're we're deep in it today, guys. <laughs> I, I hope well, listeners you uh enjoy this nonsense. Say, perhaps perhaps an alternative phrasing, it was always honor. That bound the surges. It wasn't always Tanavast, right? That bound oh, for the sure. surges. Yeah. See, I was I was going for a different interpretation that the the ten surges existed culturally before mm -hmm. Honor turned up, and then when Honor turned up, he bound the surges, and now the magic system exists. I I do think there are probably things Honor did to manifest these applications of the surges in kind of these 10 abilities sort of thing. Mm. I, I do think that's likely, but not like honor didn't create gravity is what I'm saying. Like going yes, off what yeah, David I completely said. Agree. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I kind of wonder, and like, this is like getting out there pretty far speculatively, but we've seen that the singers had access to a surge a very, very long time ago. Right, with the stone And so shaking. I do I do wonder if that is some of the seeds of of this culture, is that way, way back, they might not have been surge binders or surge bound in a way that we understand, but 
you could interact with the magic in a way on Rashar, and those were the 10 forces that were there. And that kind of yeah. became more codified as they hmm. saw these 10 things and they themselves began to understand them and have opinions about them. Or maybe nine things. Yes, or maybe, maybe nine, nine things. Or maybe nine things, <laughs> bizarrely. Okay, so, <laughs> there's, there's two things in your Bonyol speech there. There's the one about how cultivation was involved, and we haven't said the word cultivation in like 10 minutes. And <laughs> Rabonyol definitely yeah. said cultivation was involved. Um, oh, but yeah. the other thing was right. the the nine surges, because it really bothers me that there was nine surges before Honor. Well, how much the but, fused, like, th th there's part yeah, of this that yeah. is cultural, but, you know, the sibling does say adhesion is Honor's truest surge. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's maybe we should just get into that now. That's yeah, let's jump into that for me because I'm just like I would have said, oh, that's cultural. Like they just don't like it because it's a surge they don't get. But the Odium's fact that told it, them there's only nine valid yeah, ones. Yeah, the fact that it yeah. behaves differently, like demonstrably to magical effects, like and the sibling says it's honored surge. Like <laughs> it, there, I don't know. That's pretty straightforward. Yeah. Even though like, I like it. And and. There are isn't there's nine brands of fuse, not ten, and they. Part of this is maybe rationalizing that, but it it's interesting that like, I assume what that means is Odium cannot grant that ability. But wait, yeah. but Yelignar can grant all ten surges, right? I could see them yeah. being wrong about that. You know, just like oh, he grants nine, and they're just like oh shoot, right. this guy and has so, a ton of powers. And there's I'm like saying down in my all the surges, all but the they're surges. just not like saying ten. Okay, yeah. true. Yeah, like Hesse yeah. did not have that level of knowledge. <laughs> That's you know? true. That's true. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> or um, maybe just like internal facing uh, adhesion like doesn't do anything. They're like, oh right, you can stick yourself to yourself. Great one. Um, it's like, and so he just doesn't grant it. <laughs> manipulating your own connections inside. Like that sounds dangerous. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but now the thing that really bothers is, is two things that bothers me. Firstly, is uh, the ten gas giants. Is if there's only nine surges, why is there ten gas giants? Yeah, right. Um, yes. Honor set it up. Second, I guess the way Honor liked that yeah. we need we need ten gas giants, three planets, and three moons on Roshar in these weird one, yeah. one, one gas giant for <laughs> and each one partridge purpose. in a pear tree. <laughs> and then course. the other thing is that is that regrowth, which also acts differently, just like adhesion did. So we could say regrowth is cultivation. Wait, 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 wait. Truest... wait hold up. What do you uh, mean we know regrowth acted differently? Well, because Lift was it able does. to Lift was able to heal uh, the radiance, so she was able to use regrowth, even though the suppression fabrial was going. She couldn't use abrasion, but she right. could use regrowth. <laughs> yeah. So, well, so, although it is unclear whether that is because progression is quote unquote cultivations to a surge or because there is life light going on or because or there's just, lift uh, going just on generic yeah. lift weirdness like <laughs> yeah i forgot about lift weirdness yeah it could yeah. just be lift weirdness yeah, yeah. and anyway. there's also the fact that she has to go up higher in earth if i recall correctly for it to work like she has to actually move up a few levels doesn't she try to heal the bird and it doesn't work and then she goes up a floor and she tries to heal the bird oh, again oh, and it does work oh, 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 i don't oh, think that's oh, related no, no. to the fact she goes up. The, the the radiance are on the base floor when she's healing the unconscious radiance yeah the it's, it's pretty floor. low down it's in like the well, that is true tier. it's weird that she had to do that then though because she does do no, that. no 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 i don't i don't think she does that she tries to heal the bird sure. and and it resists which i've always read as well it's an invested yes Agreed. entity so it's going to resist and she she tries harder and and finally succeeds in in pushing healing power into it yeah she tries harder when she's higher up it's not because she's higher up. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think she's I, higher up though i thought I'm, she I'm climbed up another floor let's just look at the at the interlude let's just look yeah. at the court yeah yeah Lift. no so so david you are right that uh she's like ah oh, let's see uh fifth floor Radiant stuff. Oh, you know what? I might have gotten confused by the fact that she's she's going to where he is. So she's saying, let's see fifth floor, but she's not going up to get her power. She's going to find. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I think I think that is yeah. right. That's um, what threw me off. I thought she was like, oh, better check another floor. We'll go up higher. But I don't even know why she would have thought of that. So, yeah. Yeah. No, but, that's fair. But, so, yeah, it bothers me that cultivation and re regrowth appears to be cultivation's truest surge. Uh, loads of asterisks. Hypothetically, if regrowth is cultivation's okay. truth, search, I agree. then why isn't that treated just like adhesion is with the to Rabon, you're talking about it to derision, you know? And that is one of the reasons I don't think the parallel I, I don't think progression and adhesion are 
quite as symmetrical. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. I think there has been a conversation in the fandom for a very long time, way, way before Rhythm of War, about how the surges are of both honor and cultivation yes. and how the radiant spren are of both honor and cultivation. Correct. And we've been trying to find like lines of symmetry on the surge binding chart and we've huh, been going, yep. that's, that's well, the these, <laughs> yep. these orders are of honor or more of honor and mm-hmm. these orders are of cultivation or more of cultivation. And so what I, th- what I think we are looking at here is that adhesion truly is honor's truest surge in that it has the most honor in it than any other surge. Maybe, maybe even 100% honor. And cultivation, uh, cultivation, progression might be cultivation's truest surge in that it has the most cultivation in it. But I don't think progression is as much cultivation as adhesion is honor. Right. So, like, yeah. adhesion might be 100% honor, progression might be 90% cultivation. And Something like that. Using- okay. I see what you're Using saying. Using Rabonial's words, it would be as honor created adhesion and bound adhesion, and cultivation created progression and then bound progression. Well, then honor, and then honor, pro- and then honor bounded progression. Right. Like oh, that. I see. Yeah, that yeah. could work. Yeah, and I will say, like progression, progression is a surge that. I mean, like everything has to do with natural law eventually if you get down to like biology and all that stuff. But like if you're seeing cultivation as kind of a god of life and honor is kind of like a god of, you know, physics and kind of like, you know, all that sort of thing definitely falls most strongly into the cultivation, like kind of thematically. Yeah, I, I, I I think I like that. I wonder if like honor did something to adhesion specifically. Like in the process of like making these abilities available, so we're we're already in deep prehistory here, <laughs> right? Like way before first desolation, right? Yeah. Uh, and there there are some there's some measure of dawn singers using surges, at least stone shaping, in some way mm-hmm. that we don't know. I would assume that happened after Honor and Cultivation arrived on Roshar and invested there, right? Uh, And in that process, Honor perhaps um, bound the surges, (laughs) whatever that means. uh, Maybe maybe if we keep saying that phrase enough. We'll we'll understand it. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, yeah. Although I do want to draw like a little... Just like a clear, put a little clarification on there. Like we're saying, honor bound the searches, but that's not the same thing as honor restricting the searches. No. That's which true. came later. That's true. At least in the instances that we know. At least that we can, yeah. Like the and in fact, I don't know. Is there anywhere that it says honor bound the searches specifically? Because I know we've seen bondsmiths bound the searches, but I don't know if I've ever seen honor. Uh, bound it's the in searches. the part that we read that. Uh, oh, uh, that, oh, that. Oh, of course, that part. Yeah. Uh, so, so <laughs> at least, at least the fuse no. say yes. Surges are bound by honor. Okay. No, that makes sense. But, um, but we've also have bondsmiths binding surges instead. Yeah. Right. Oh God. Uh, yeah. Tanifast is the original bondsmith. I honestly, that would explain things. Uh, like, but I thought Ishar was the original bondsmith in a sense. <laughs> well, kind it, of in a sense. Yeah. Uh, but like it so so this is very much going to depend on how you define what a bondsmith is or <laughs> rather <laughs> i mean you're not wrong you're not wrong or, or rather how how sill defines what a bondsmith is That's right true. Mm-hmm. because bondsmiths are like when you when you start digging into the meaning of words and the fact that dalinar forged a bond with Kaladin mm-hmm. or for Kaladin. Mm-hmm. And that bond is to those more Cosmere aware than Dalinar, a connection. And so you could make a very reasonable argument that bondsmiths are less of an of, a, of an order of the Knights Radiant and more a term for people who forge and or manipulate connection. Can, can I read the paragraph that is it, the, the Yeah. yeah. Uh, so 
She's talking to Dalinar. This is in Syl's interlude. Great interlude, by the way. Um, your abilities are what made the original Oath Pact, she said. And they existed and were named long before the Knights Radiant were founded. A bondsmith connected, capital C, the Heralds to Braes, made them immortal, and locked our enemies away. A bondsmith bound other surges. Other? What? Uh, and <laughs> brought humans <laughs> to Roshar, fleeing their dying world. A bondsmith created, or at least discovered, the Nahel Bond, the ability of Spren and humans to join together into something better. You connect things down our realms, ideas, people. The hell is this? It is inconceivable to me that Ishar <laughs> would have done all of that. Like well, uh, some, but, yes. Y- yeah, like there there is definitely Yeah, like a Bondsmith connected the Heralds to Braze, made them presumably the Heralds, uh, and locked enemies away. Like, didn't Ish- wouldn't Ashar need to like like collab with honor to do that i don't know like, yeah I think so, all ishar i i personally think all of those that we just read are yeah ishar. yeah because he is yeah, said as binder of gods right so like binding yeah. the fused that that could just be referring to binding the fused on braze in a sense yeah the all, I, I think all that honor did was make an agreement with the heralds he gave them those powers and then right. ishar founded the oath pack like that was him Oh boy, and th- and there is kind of a weird quote where the Stormfather is kind of talking about how Honor gave them this oath, and it has something to do with how they managed to hold the heralds or the few souls back. Oh, so God. Honor that... was probably involved, but Ishar is the founder of the Oath Pack. I, I am literally uh, opening so many tabs of the same ebook <laughs> and, and, and word searching <laughs> so many things. I'm like, okay, I guess I'll oath open Oathbringer chapter 38 here. <laughs> uh, that is my favorite chapter of all of Stormlight. It's so good after two uh, two books of not knowing what's going on to know what's yeah. going on. At mm. least lore-wise. Not my favorite lore-wise. character moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, of course, of yeah. course, of course. <sighs> but yeah, like that. that is very interesting because it sure is the binder of gods and he yeah. did toy with surges on ashen which is still just crazy that ishar and know, did that and we know that they kept calling the radiance ishar's knights because he was the one who was talking about founding them to keep mm. the to, like that talent cut says oh you're one of ishar's knights to shalon like oh, uh, right. everything everything oh, except yeah, yeah, for yeah. potentially that original binding the surges i think is ishar for sure like Jeez. it could be attributed to him based on what we know. Cause the way I've always interpreted this is whatever role Ishar played in Asher's society was also called a bondsmith. Could be. And and yes, so whatever right. whatever religious leader he was or whatever he was, um, he was the bondsmith of whatever, and they had, I don't know, whatever other ranks. Mm-hmm. And then when they came to Roshar and the knights started forming. He noticed people with power similar to them, and he's like, oh yeah, you guys are also bondsmiths. And so the name was inherited by the Radiant Order of Bondsmiths. I also just realized that someone had to name the Radiant Orders, and like, I hope we get that scene. Where, they, like, they, they were the always have been named the that in the spiritual realm. <laughs> in the and spiritual not, realm, yeah. Uh, maybe in the spiritual realm, fine. Yeah. They, the <laughs> Stormfather does talk about that, though. Like He says, Yezrian wasn't a windrunner. Yezrian was a man with powers that bore no name. Like, he yeah. was... right. Mm. Yeah, he was the guy. Uh, t- just I'm just gonna read this from Oathbreaker chapter 38, and this is talking about the heralds. They gave themselves up as odium is sealed by the powers of honor and cultivation. Your herald sealed the spread of the dead into the place you call damnation. The heralds went to honor, and he gave them this right, this oath, just as you said. Uh, they thought it would be the end of the war forever, but they were wrong. Honor was wrong, and he goes on to explain the problems. But <laughs> if you interpret it that Ishar created the Oath Pact, that's very plausible in like the Herald sealed the spread of the dead into the place you call damnation. Like that could be, and like Honor like agreed, is like, hey, yeah, you, you can go do that. That sounds cool. Uh, why Honor would ever trust Ishar for anything? Great question. Like <laughs> real After talk. Ashen. After yeah. destroy being tempted by Odium and 
not it, blowing up Ashen, but uh, destroying it real good. Um, yeah, I'm, I mean, like, it is kind of, when you think about it, sort of an odd plan. Like, <laughs> I, I, I'm it all comes back to that, the facts of bad plan. Yeah, like, like the circumstances, I want to see what led up to it, because they're not like, oh, let's find a way to destroy these cognitive shadows. Like, we're going to bind them to a third planet that, as far as we know, has not been involved in any of these other events. <laughs> Like arbitrarily, and it's, it's the equivalent of sweeping them under the rug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's yeah. very. No one wants I to go to, there anyway. I'm ready for the Herald I, flashbacks, Brandon. Seriously, though, that's like, crazy. You're right. I'm kind of like, I wonder if they thought it was a permanent solution, and then they they kind of implemented it for the first time, and then they didn't realize the Heralds would be able to. Sorry, the Fused would be able to torture them, and they were I like, think that's "Oh, plausible. no." Yeah, 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 yeah. And then. And like, were they going to be immortal jailers, like just walking around braids all the time? And they thought they, like, you know, was that the plan? Did they think they'd be able to come back? <laughs> well, <laughs> it's a. Uh... So the around the time of the first desolation sounds like a terrible time to have been alive. <laughs> <laughs> it's, so it doesn't sound great. It is very possible that the heralds were just desperate to do something that preserves humanity, and yeah. it is not unreasonable to go well we can sacrifice 10 of us which i now realize sounds awful like like 10 of us and that is awful anyway we can we can <laughs> sacrifice the 10 of us oh and like i was like what? I, I just heard 10 of us twice i was just like <laughs> i'm sorry I'm, 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 I'm word searching things to find things and i'm just like wait what just anyway, happened we can we can sacrifice ourselves to become the eternal jailers of the fused and then the rest of humanity potentially millions of people get to live like that's on the surface not a bad deal true true mm. it's not a bad deal but it's, it's just i wonder how that is the plan you end up with you know like you don't like did you run through like honor wasn't like hey you can make this thing called anti-void light if you can get a hold of some of it you know? <laughs> <laughs> well like i think you know, anti void light's interesting in that way because, like, I, I just wonder how much uh, of things are that like could be discovered, but because the shards couldn't think of it, it yeah it yeah. didn't exist, right? Because it is just limited by the vessels, and just reminds me I of how a... like Aiden Alcium is like Aiden Alcium interpreted things this way, and so that's how it was, and like it's. It's not like that with honor. Like they, they could have gotten anti void light. Yeah, honor it, didn't I have, uh, maybe. I, Go ahead. I was gonna say I have a I have a lovely idea in my head that just because uh, how the sound of anti void light hurts Raboniel, just the thought of anti light to like a shard might hurt them. Like they might just literally like they start thinking they go, oh well, that, what would that oh, sound yeah, like? Because and, it is their investiture. It it's literally yeah. their stuff. They're made up yeah. of it. It's yeah, I. It. I, I, in fact, might even go further than that and say that it because anti-investiture is such an anathema to them, like they cannot even conceive of its existence. Yeah, mm. but that's possible. So could weird. they? But like, would would a shard not understand what anti void light is if someone was holding? Like, does Odium still not know what anti void light is, even if even now that someone else has conceived of it? To be, to be honest, that is an excellent question about how Teravangian and or like even if it was just race right uh like yeah. how they would have how the shards themselves would think of it that's oh, very yeah. interesting because in my did, head it feels more like a nuclear option like shards might be like I don't want people dealing with my creations I don't want people being able to counter anything that I do like let's just leave anti-investiture alone mm. and yeah, it's like a maybe good not question for uh, it's a good question for Brandon is did the shards know about anti-light they might just they just might not have known so, so we 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 have to do another Herald episode because there's there's <laughs> things I want to talk about. I want to talk about the desolations and the Everstorm too. There's stuff to talk about in those. So let's we'll we'll veer a little bit away from uh, Ishar and binding the all that stuff because it's crazy. Maybe we can just bind Ishar into his own episode. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel like there's gonna be more than one. Because there's also Ishar's <laughs> spread experiments. But, uh, David, you were talking about how uh, honor restricting the surges. Do we want to talk yeah. about that? Yeah, we can talk about that. There's a, there's a really good quote, actually, from the Stormfather this time. 
Oh, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, that he's talking about. Dalinar's experimenting with his powers. It's after he's connected with Nail, and he's just connecting with that regular soldier and viewing those connections kind of, you know, permeate and, you right. know, like how, how this guy connects to other people. And the Stormfather is explaining to him about searches. Uh, and he's just talking about this power which has been described to him because Malishi could use it in the last few days, but the Stormfather's never experienced it because he wasn't bonded back then. And he says, I was not certain it could be done. The power of Bondsmith was tempered by honor for the good of all ever since the destruction of Ashen. And at some point in response to the destruction of Ashen, honor restricted what was capable of the searches. And those restrictions seem to be falling away and are potentially related to the greater power of the oath slash whatever dangers the radiance present simply by existing. I would agree. I would agree with that, right? Because, Potentially, like it, it feels like getting back to Ashar. <laughs> hey, uh, we tried the Shar. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> yeah. uh, we're very connected to him. Uh, but like, maybe honor gave, like M- Ishar maybe had like some repentance moment, understanding the the problems he made but since honor tempered bondsmithing right that he was comfortable giving ishar this power set again because it's like no it's good i fixed it guys i fixed it we're good and ishar is an expert so now that i've limited this he'll be really good at doing the this stuff right like i i feel like that's plausible even though it's still a little dumb honor i must say but my question is kind of were the restrictions applied just to the bondsmith's powers or are the restrictions applied to every surge that are kind of falling mm-hmm. away because we do have a while where Brandon talks about how superpower versions of these surges are what destroyed Ashen but maybe that's just Dawn Shard related and so I yeah. kind of can't decide if I think just the bondsmiths well, I... or if it is all radiance, that there are. is the line in the stone shaping Ars Arcanum that uh, where Chris is saying, fortunately, in my exper- explorations, it appears that stone shaping is far less explosive of a power bound by the rules that honor placed upon it to protect from the same mistakes that happened on Yolan. So that that's <laughs> interesting as well. So it's not Whoa. even just Ashen, right? So yeah, and like, was that a separate restriction than the bondsmith restriction, or yeah, like, right. it was just was very gonna, odd? I was going to mm. ask that because it seems like the history of of the Cosmere is like a planet blows up, and Honor is like, okay, I don't want that, and so he puts restrictions on the surges, and then another planet blows up, and he's like, <laughs> okay, I don't want that either, and so he restricts them again. If only he had better foresight. <laughs> it's like hey my my wife corvalium of uh what do you think do you think this is a good plan i think you're kind of an idiot tan of it's like okay let's go with this plan then like uh, so i should get rid of nuclear fusion as a power like yep, yeah yep sorry for the best like it seems unclear i know you tried to dissociate these before about honor binding the su- surges versus putting restrictions on them mm-hmm. but in a sense Kind the of. word bind kind of means restrict in a sense, yeah. right? So uh, I think it's plausible that maybe just Honor didn't do those binding until after Ashen was destroyed. So like maybe the history goes, there's crap that happened on Yolan. I don't think Yolan exploded, by the way. we, th- I mean, Yolan's hidden, <laughs> but like Chris seemed to still know of yolan and like yolish standard people right? still live on this people still live there yeah. oh sorry yolan I, sorry yolan yolan people. but i th- think micro kinesis can kinesis 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 wow i forgot how the words <laughs> <laughs> i think micro kinesis was a thing that honor was aware of as a dangerous magic Yes, and, and so, that was a Yolish m- magic. Uh, yeah, but like, we know that. he didn't do any binding as a direct result of that. It just sounds like when he was doing the whole binding thing, he looked at the Cosmere and was like, okay, in this place they can do this thing. I don't want Surge Binding to be able to right, do that. Right, right. And then 
in this place, they, they did this other thing. I don't want search binding to be able to do that. So it almost sounds to me like when Odium tricked Ashar to experiment with surges, that was before even Honor bound the surges, potentially? Uh, I mean, maybe, maybe not. It's, it's, it's not like clear. Potentially. Like, when they say, ah, Ishar was playing, like, toying with the surges, that could simply mean Odium is getting Ishar to experiment with magic in general in that stage, right? And is it in doing generic... Like, like it's broader there in Ash. I think I interpret binding the surges as not sort of any sort of restriction. Like, like he made them accessible to people is what I kind of interpret it as. Like, say you've got like a bunch of crap everywhere. He got all the crap together and he bound it together so someone could take the crap and do like stuff. Like he's with harnessing it. it. Yeah, like, but the crap's still there. He's, it's mm -hmm. it's not restricted anyway. It's now just in an accessible package that someone can. Just, the the thing is, is the, the phrase is bounded <laughs> by the rules that honor placed upon it. Like, like it's still using the same word bind, oh, okay. right? Like, it's like yeah. So I feel so. I feel like both of these can be true. That it's in an accessible package, but in like restricted. a slightly tighter package, right? In a sense, yeah. So to use words from the book, yes. Just, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw an idea She's out going there. Let's do it. Yeah. Far. No, we're we're obviously <laughs> speculating a lot. Oh, what? Um, no way. Wh <laughs> what if? What if the timeline goes like this? Ashen, shattering, odium, odium, and honor. Sure, move to the Rusharan system. Um, Ishar is born. Odium tricks Ishar into wait, experimenting. Whoa, 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 wait, you said Ashen to start this off. Do you mean Yolen? I, I thought you were going Ashen. through the timeline and you said Ashen to start. And Did I? Okay, like, sure. Yolen. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, cool. I was Things, a little confused. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Things happen on Yolen. We're not going to look at them for a little while. And right. then things happen on Ashen. Okay. One okay. of these things is Ishar. Okay, okay, great. I'm with you now. Odium tricks Ishar into playing with surges so at this point in the timeline there is no surge binding there is just unchained access to the surges you you grab gravitation and you can do whatever you want with gravity assuming you have the power right i don't know mm. how the dawn shards fit into all of this <laughs> that's true that's true let's right. let's <laughs> deal with one unknown at a yes, time I agreed i'm with you there <laughs> Um, yeah. and, and so th that is happening. And so Ishar is playing with the surges. There are other people on Ashen who are also playing with the surges. Ashen gets destroyed. With the surge. Um, and the Dawn Shard, probably. Sure. Bad things happen on Ashen. <sighs> Stop saying the D word. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so, but well, the point I'm trying to make is that at this point, there was one, no surge binding, and two, there were surges, and three, access to the surges was unchained. Like, I'm trying to make a reference to Bondsmith Unchained right. thing from, from Not Rhythm bound. Four. Whatever that yes. means. <laughs> yes. Um, and then, as a reaction to that, Honor binds the surges. And does the whole look out in the Kazmir, look for dangerous expressions of magic and say, okay, I don't want my people to have access to that. Okay. And that includes Yolen, that includes Ashen. Right. And what he's like packaging the surges as, in a sense. Yes. Yes. So now you don't have gravitation as this kind of nebulous, you can do whatever you want with gravity. You have gravitation as a codified bound by supernatural law package of like specific abilities right. almost like when you are an elemencer you have access to like very specific abilities yes. you don't yep, get yep. to do whatever the hell you want with the power right. of of preservation wow mm -hmm. yes no no <laughs> no, no. I, I, i'm i'm Whoever with you I, I like this i like this right yeah. and so now that honor has been dead for a while these restrictions are falling apart 
whether it is because he's splintered, whether it is because of some other things going on. And so Ishar is once again starting to dabble with the powers of a bondsmith unchained. Uh, Dalinar is, is beginning to, to do the same thing to an extent. Uh, I think the weird thing Kaladin did in Oathbringer where he like broke uh, the storm, I think that is an expression of unchained one of the surges that he has Adhesion. access to. Adhesion, Probably, yeah. yeah. Um, it's hard to tell I with like, the spread and stuff. Plate foreshadowing. Yeah, that's what I felt too, but like could be both. Doesn't need to just be one. <laughs> Sure. Um, I mean, there, there were windspread there, so yeah, maybe kind of maybe deal. you're right about that. Do we think then that the limits on are put on stone shaping or it would fall through? It depends on if it. I think it just depends on whether it was part of how the magic was created and that was the way it was unrestricted, or if it was something Honor did, like post, like post in the same way he did with the Bondsmith. If it had yeah. always been restricted since it had ever existed, then I don't think it would probably go away. But wait, since what existed specifically? Sorry. If, since the entire, if for the entirety of its existence, stone shaping was created with the idea that they would not be able to access the ability to, you know, play with the, with nuclei, then I don't think that restriction would go away. But I think if that was something honor added afterward, like after stone shaping existed as a power and was a specific restriction he created, I think it could go away. You know, if it was built in, it won't, but if it was, Something additional, I think it's at risk. Well, so I see what you're saying. My mm-hmm. my issue with that phrasing mm-hmm. and uh, is like before honor bound the surges, like anything could happen. And, and I'm just reminded mm-hmm. on how like Brandon saying all illusion magic is basically light weaving, whether it's uh, mm-hmm. like like it's the similar power set. So like mm-hmm. in a sense, I would say stone shaping is the subset of this greater ability that, you know, w- was also on Yolan that then honor restricted. And so it's like honor's not creating it per se. Does that make sense? I just don't think that I see what you're saying, but I just don't think that if honor when it was codified, if it was not codified, including that, I don't think it's disintegrating back into anybody can do anything. Like, I don't think we're losing honor binding searches into a codified system. I think we're losing later restrictions that were added, I guess. But that is kind of I agree that it's confusing and I'm not like 100 percent. Yeah, I think on that. I'll say the point that you made, Eric, about how all light, all illusion magic is basically light weaving, right. and so this stone shaping, all stone shaping is essentially stone shaping that was on Yolan, or microkinesis or whatever it is. Cohesion-y so, stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so the, he placed like he would have replaced a restriction on stone shaping mm-hmm. as it manifested on Roshar to stop it from doing um like nuclear fission stuff Mm -hmm. and now that's now falling away so now you've kind of got this unchecked stone shaping which will now allow you to do the nuclear fission stuff yeah yeah he he bound he bound it to make it accessible he bound it within rules on roshar so it's within the whole you need a bond thing but and then he restricted it to stop the really bad stuff happening but now it's the restrictions that's falling apart yeah. but the binding which gives you access to it is still there i guess i just i think we're just saying like we see a different like we you know we think that it's either intrinsic to it or it was something he added well, later and I, yeah well I right think it could definitely be both because like or there's either. there's a line i was not certain it could be done the power of the bondsmiths was tempered but i honor for the good of all ever since the destruction of Ashen. And that mm-hmm. is... That is going away. So, like, that line interp- I'm interpreting mm-hmm. as those are the restrictions Honor put in play after si- since the destruction of Ashen, right? And so I feel like that's that's Honor binding the surges. 
So you're saying in, when he originally was like making it into magic, that is the same thing. Yes, yeah, that that is mm -hmm. what this this line is indicating to me. It doesn't have to be the case, but like at least this one is 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 old. It's tempered by honor. It's been there for a long time, and mm. so it's interesting that this is the specific one that is falling away. Like I, I'm not sure if the other surge binding those restrictions will. be be broken because if anything bondsmiths get to do all the spiritual shenanigans right like that's the one that needs the most restriction like it's like there's this other line uh it should not be possible but no long but honor no longer lives to enforce his laws right okay here's my crack theory i've got it and i kind of put it in there a little bit too but it's it's coming it's becoming more fully formed now uh Dalinar, the, the risk is Dalinar is becoming honor and Dalinar doesn't know what he's doing. And so when Dalinar wants to try something, he changes the way things work. And so the system's not falling apart because honor is dead. The system is falling apart because Dalinar is a child at the controls and he is going, oh, I think I should be able to do this. And so now he can because he's honor and he's changing it. Yeah, that's an interesting and idea. And he might be moving things mm -hmm. unintentionally. Yeah, and Raboni even says mm. at one point, she's like, it's not like Honor dying made the world fall apart. Honor's power right. still exists. We don't need Honor. You don't need to worship Honor. So why the investiture is it still apart? has always existed, right? Like the, yeah. the vessel dying mm -hmm. doesn't change that fact, right? Mm. And so Dalinar <sighs> wants to do something. Dalinar wants to make a perpendicularity and he's Honor. So you can do that. You know, now that's a thing that's possible because he has decided what powers any, himself and potentially other Radiants have access to. With the whole Aiden Alzium perception thing, what the things Aiden Alzium thought were mm. possible were the things that were mm. possible. And mm. by extension, the same with the shards, except now mm. you don't have a shard, you have somebody with the power of a shard. Mm -hmm. Asterisk. Mm. I hate it. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I really like that. Um, I Because... I like several things because, first of all, totally right. Honor's power still exists, and I there. Given that when Teravangian ascended, the he's still bound by previous agreements, in in some slash many senses, the things Honor agreed to are still bound in some sense, right? Yeah, yes. it would it would have mm -hmm. to be by that same sort yeah. of logic like the agreement whatever is imprisoning odium on roshar that that ha that has still existed regardless of mm -hmm. honor's death and maybe odium thought that killing honor would break the oath and you know he was he was wrong right like yeah like we we only know that the power is still bound because uh race died in Teravid and terravagian <laughs> saw the difference and so we, we don't really know what race knew any anyway mm -hmm. It, it's just interesting, this unchained aspect. The, the thing that I have that I don't know I agree with is it sounds like Ishar. Like, I'm not sure how much Dalinar did is allowing Ishar to do new crazy crap. Does that make sense? No, he, yeah, well, I, I don't know if that's necessarily true. Like, Ishar could even know some of this stuff from back before the surges were chained, you know? Like, he might well, yeah. be aware because it was possible and is now again. But yeah, I don't I don't know if specifically I wouldn't want to try to go, oh, because Dalinar did this, Ishar can do this specific thing. But I just think Dalinar yeah. is trying to push what the bondsmiths are capable of doing. And is maybe that I agree with giving and himself more I, power than he would have once had. I I agree with that and I do agree Dalinar could if he knew more, uh probably change things that honor did uh i'm not sure quite sure how much he has done in a broad sense but i i think that is plausible i don't think that he's changed anything for anybody else yet if he's if he's capable of doing that like i just think dalinar is stretching his powers and is maybe moving things that he's not aware of were formerly limits oh uh, i can buy that i can buy that yeah 
Yeah, Perhaps. but then there's the other side that like all the Radiants were supposedly a risk. And so if they were like, they didn't have to kill the Bondsmith, they had to kill all the Radiants had to end. That, that, mm. that's, that's actually uh, a part in this that's really important that it, it seems to me like Honor in his dying, right? He's, he's dying, he's mm-hmm. nearly dead, but not quite dead, uh, Recreant's time. It, it almost seems like Honor himself is worried that his restrictions are n- insufficient, in a sense. Mm, yeah. But right? he's giving the Stormfather the task to choose a Bondsmith again one day, simultaneously yeah, with being uh, worried yeah. about, about like, he is also going crazy. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it, it, it is tricky because, uh, like, the visions are like, refound the Radiance, and then also... Don't blow he's up the like, planet. In the Recreants, <laughs> like, man, you're gonna screw everything up, but... But it's it's possible that like honor changed his mind after the recreants happened, right? Like because they're they're we don't quite know the timeline, but he obviously needed to witness the recreants exactly. Yeah. And so there's some time, and if there's some time, there's a lot of time for a shard to think and plan and do something and be like, wow, that uh that that whole breaking their oath thing that was that 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 was not a good idea. That that is that is bad. Sorry about well, that, guys. Uh- yeah. I agree. And I also think that like there can be a difference between honor at his best, like his plan for the radiance to reform and like honor going crazy also that it's yeah. he's raging at people. You know, like he yeah. can be doing both things at once, like be unhappy the radiance ended and still be freaking out about their possibility they could destroy the planet. You know, doesn't that kind of remind you of Ishar in a way? Like the insanity almost? Like Ishar yeah, and then sometimes like, has plans like, and right. sometimes sta- stable well rarely let's be honest but like i wonder if that's a parallel that brandon will make more explicit as we get to back five where we where we learn this honor and herald stuff right it actually mm. reminded me strongly of fuzz oh mm. yeah yeah oh for yeah. sure yeah yeah i mean that that's, was, that is what is happening there yeah in a sense. yeah uh preservation laris was another shard that was splintered and there near the very end he had his good days and he had his bad days mm-hmm, yeah Mm. As a, as a as a complete random aside, I wonder uh-huh. what Ishar thought the, when Dalinar was by uh, swearing his oaths and he got a couple of moments of lucidity. Did he like look around and go like, "Oh God, what am I doing?" And then Probably. go back to being crazy spread? talking. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> yikes. Yeah. <laughs> Can I read the weird nail Bondsmith wob now that we're just talking about Bondsmiths doing things they're not supposed to do? <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah. Okay, here we go. So this is when Nail, this is right before Nail, Dalinar does his cool Nail connecty thing, where he sees Nail's past, and Nail is confronting him, and he, I'm just going to read it. How are you a bondsmith, Nail asked Dalinar? You should not exist, Blackthorn. Your cause is not righteous. You should be denied the true searches of honor. Yeah, perhaps you're wrong, Nail, yada, yada, yada. No, uh, other Radiants can lie to themselves in their spren. So-called honor spren prove that morality is shaped by their perceptions. You should be different. Honor should not allow this bonding. Honor is dead, Dalinar said. And yet, Nail said, Honor should still prevent this. Prevent you. He looked at Dalinar up and down. No shard blade. Fair enough. And then he attacks him. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> like, uh, like, I think he was... The, the no shard blade thing, I assume, is like, he's just verifying, oh, you've not got uh, the honor blade. You you are a bondsmith. Like, he's, he's just being like... Okay, that's He's fair. trying to, like, work it out in his head. Like, how are you a bondsmith? And he's like, oh, you've not got a shard blade. Oh, I guess you are a bondsmith that- then. Oh, that I agree. I with. don't agree. I mean, okay. I, I, I rather I can buy it that it is plausible that that is what is happening. Oh, okay, fair. Not that I like I, necessarily agree, but yeah. like at this stage, it's just like we're making statements. Rates plausibility of this. <laughs> like we're not saying what is yeah. this. And the unfortunate thing that Nail is mad is like just like another layer. Yeah, on yeah. Like how, how much can like, he be? What trusted. you can interpret. But I think I think he is referring to. Some sig- that there is some significance if Dalinar could pull the Stormfather out as a shard blade, and that that is that that would be significant in some way for Dalinar. Yeah. Just because based on the significance of him being able to do something similar, and how apparently risky that was according to the Spren when they claimed they almost killed the Stormfather by summoning his right yeah pure that's, essence that's or whatever yes. that was. The the so I think, did say I think that. Nail is referring to that, but. And and there's also this line. It's like you should be denied the true surges of honor. Like, the, is that just yeah. referring to adhesion or just any of that? Like, 
<laughs> or is that just adhesion? I think adhesion. Yeah. I think that's adhesion. Like, Why I don't is even it plural then, Nail? Gah! It's just an adhesion. Because it's spiritual adhesion and physical adhesion as well. Yeah. You know, I, <laughs> yes. There's so much about this passage that I hate. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I guess Honor was super, super picky about who was Bondsmith. Like, Honor had to give final approval to Bondsmiths. I guess. I mean, ultimately, I think that's true for any Radiant. Because he, he, he yeah. had to accept the oaths, right? Uh, yeah, well, no, how no. much cultivation accept the oaths? We don't really know the extent of that. Yeah. But, but, like, presumably for Bondsmiths and Windrunners, Honor is accepting those oaths. I'm pretty confident in that, right? Yeah. Huh. So I guess Honor was just, was Honor super, super picky? And is that all Nail's referring to here? Um, and it, and it's the bit where Dalinar says Honor is dead and Nail's like, and yet Honor still should prevent this. Like, Do you think that's referring to the Tanavas cognitive shadow aspect that's in the Stormfather? That like the Stormfather, mm. that, that shadow should still not have done this in a sense, maybe? I was... Maybe. Thinking that Neo believes that the power of honor itself, like the shard itself, mm. should have mm. prevented that somehow. Mm-hmm. Oh, which, okay. yeah, which, yeah. which would just hopefully play into Neo's insanity that things are the way that Ishar says they should be, because he's yeah, the only true. one that is sane. Or the that honor power still is in place, and Neo just doesn't believe. Dalinar should be worthy to be approved by that power. There's like, also that. Yeah. It's, it's Nail is the one that's in the Nail's wrong about his opinion of Dalinar, not that he's wrong about his opinion of the how the power works. Well, Nail and Ishar both agreeing that Dalinar shouldn't have this power. I wonder where <laughs> Nail got that idea, mm, Ishar. <laughs> uh, it, it's so interesting because I still remember that word of Brandon, where Brandon's like, "Never trust." Anything a herald says <laughs> ever this is just like very unequivocal, but like, oh, it's so interesting. It's it's <laughs> it's really yeah. interesting what this means. Yeah, Makes I think sense. the it honor should that. still prevent this is what stands out most to me. For some reason, Nail thinks that honor would not allow this and should not have still be allowing this is like the main takeaway, aside from all his like you should be denied the true surges of honor. Like I think that's just raving. I, you, you know, know what know? you know what that could be? Uh, David, that could just be Nail isn't privy to the knowledge that Honor had very shortly before his death, where Honor is thinking, no, 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 I'm toast. I need to give people a tool to defeat Odium later, right? And so maybe like if if you turn the clock back a century before, uh, Honor's death, let's say. Honor would probably be like, no, screw the Radiance. You, you, you guys are going to blow crap up. Don't do that. That's, that's dumb. And no, I don't want any Bondsmiths. But near the end of his life, he's like swearing an oath that's like, bond, bond someone. Find someone that will be a Bondsmith. Be a Knight's Radiant and things. So may- maybe... Nail could be going off of a th- like an older thing Honor would have wanted, but not like mm-hmm. the most present thing. It, it kind of depends how much Nail knows of Gavilar's visions, right? Like we 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 don't really know mm-hmm. how much Gavilar said. Like he obviously had extra knowledge, but how much did he gave give to heralds? I don't know. Big question yeah. mark. No, that is no, that's <laughs> interesting. I, it makes you wonder how much like how plugged in the heralds were for all those years where they were alive and honor was alive and they were not doing their own thing. Like that's really just true. Kind of yeah. Just like doing their own thing. Like was honor occasion. Like, yo, do you want to go back to damnation? Maybe. Like, hey, we- and they're like, no, no. <laughs> but I'm so excited for those pre honors death herald viewpoints. Cause I want to know how much they talk to honor. You're fighting the war on the guy's behalf and he's a giant omnipresent God on your like, planet. So <laughs> I think honor was probably really like, maybe not hurt in, a, a shardic sense of actually being injured, but like personally, he would have felt hurt, like realizing that the heralds were wrong. He probably was always maybe bitter about like oh, this South Pack thing. This and uh, that 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 didn't work out. Uh, I thought. This I mean, you can. So I I think I've made this argument on on a 
an episode before, and I still think it holds a little bit of water in that the heralds breaking their oaths in the oath pact by virtue of them being um champions of honor like their breaking of their oaths would have carried like through the power to honor himself not like in the fullest extent but like so many heralds breaking oaths would have been similar to the shard breaking maybe a lesser oath mm. and, and so like that could have been like something yeah like that could have been uh one of the factors that led to the splintering hmm. i could i remember that being an early theory for honor splintering in the first place when we didn't know a lot about when that happened mm-hmm. uh hmm. and i could see it being a possibility but i i just for dramatic reasons want honor to have broken an oath himself which allowed himself yeah. to be killed like i think that'd be cool I, I, I think both can be valid, that. right? Oh like yeah, it could be. But it could be both. That's just that's just me imagining. So yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know where we're going with this, but we're sure raising a lot of questions that we don't know answers <laughs> to. Uh, so ho- hope you're interested. Well, in post rhythm of war, we are Taravangianing a lot of questions actually. Uh... Because instead of raise. You're not raising questions. Boo. Get, get out of here. Get out of here. I love Boo. that. Boo. Get out of here. Get some raisins. Uh, eat some odium. yum. Um, They're so odi yummy. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to, since we can't stop talking about the heralds, what if we just talk about the honor blades and how they grant powers to uh, the the heralds? Because there's, there's, basically we know a few ways that surge binding has been accessed. Uh, honor blades. Bonds with radiance, Bren. Fused. And uh, whatever the crap uh, stone shaping was by the Dawn Singers. Oh, and Yelignar, I guess. But, you know. And pre and ashen surge binding as well. Okay, yeah, right. Uh, but, 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 but like, you, you mean you're not, you're not wrong. So, let, 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 the, the honor blades are very interesting uh, in that they like the spren modeled certain things after the honor blades mm-hmm. right mm. like that was that was kind of the thing about shard blades that's like oh yeah they're formed uh after a blade because that's what the honor blades were and and things so i think they are actually the least interesting of all of this i Agree, but there are things that we haven't discussed about honor blades because mm, there okay. there are mechanics. It's it's just interesting that honor created these ten precious blades, right? That are mm. uh, I don't want to say the word splinter, but like fragments of honor himself. And for some mm. reason, that immediately grants surge binding, right? I I think they just form something very similar to a bond like the blade connects with whoever is wielding it and so so the other blades come after the binding of the surges right i agree i agree yes has to yeah, yeah. and so i think honor is just creating these things as essentially keys to the powers that he has now codified as mm. like distinct sets of abilities and he's like, okay, heralds, here are the keys. And they just they just work, right? They are they are in many ways like Fabrials nowadays, right? Well that's, um, Yeah, like I was gonna say I really just think about them as being unsealed metal mines that were created yeah, by they honor are, for yeah. surge binding. Yep. Like that there's a there's direct comparisons drawn it by Chris and the Ars Arcana between them. Oh right, yeah, that's true. That's yeah. true. Yeah, it seems oh, okay. it seems like whatever access to bondsmithing Ishar had on Ashen, it seems like he's lost that. I agree. Yeah. Like he, <laughs> he needed to go back and get his honor blade in order to do mm-hmm. like bondsmithy things. Oh, nowadays. okay. I see what yeah. right. So he didn't have some other magical ability that was still inherent in his soul and so yeah like he couldn't probably um, maybe he couldn't it, like the oath yeah. pack maybe there's yeah. like an interaction there right the fact that he was a bondsmith before and now he has the bondsmith other blade but like these are not worth speculating about i think 
I think it is interesting that he's lost whatever ability he's had before. Hmm. Yeah, no, I, that it makes perfect sense, though, because he would he had to ask Honor for the power to create the Oath Pack, so he clearly had lost whatever powers he had been messing around with. Right. That might have been Honor's restrictions, and he was just, like, asking for, okay, get me, give me a passcode around the restrictions now. Hmm. Were the Honor Blades definitely created for the Heralds? They didn't exist beforehand, right? I can... I, I'm pretty sure. The honor blades. I don't. I don't believe so, and I don't recall any evidence that they existed for any anything. But they yeah. were created for the heralds. I just had the random idea in my head that, like, when honor bound the surges, he bound them in the honor blades, and so like the honor blades are like the physical representation of like, mm. the surges, okay. like being being bound. I um, I have a uh-huh. crazy tangent that's related, but like, guys, <laughs> we've gone down this. every single one of those so far. <laughs> There's a whole other aspect of this that we haven't, that we know nof- very little about. Human Voidbringers. Yes. Like, whatever, presumably, they had powers of some sort post-leaving Ashen. And, like, so I'm just wondering how, like, was that not surge binding? <laughs> right? Like, when did no, Honor, a, like... Yeah. Re- bind the surges right and how would that have affected human void bringers because that was like pretty after you know ashen do we know that they had surges by the time they'd showed up because like we know that they say they destroyed the planet with the surges and that they'd use the surges to flee to rishar but i never got the impression that the early humans had powers bef- before the heralds or the or the radiance yeah. started up, and that the first time anybody started fighting with magic was when the fuse were started to be brought back. Was my understanding always? Oh, so you're saying human void bringers did not have magical abilities? I don't they think they necessarily the had to have. Yeah, like they just they showed up and they were awful, and they like the singers had some powers, but they were still making stone weapons with them. You know, like it wasn't like they were really cracking. Hmm. Yeah, it, it with with Ishar, it sounds like the humans lost whatever power they had, right? Yeah, yeah. Or or maybe no magic users survived the exodus from from Ashen, other than like the heralds. Maybe it was pretty bad, but not so bad that no one le- that people didn't manage to survive it and create a fully functioning human society. <laughs> yeah, you only need a couple hundred people for that. Hmm. Yeah, you'll be fine. Don't worry about the genetic bottleneck. It'll it'll be fine. <laughs> Don't worry about the genetic bottleneck. You're thousands of years to Just, deal yeah, with that. Okay. And like four migrations of aliens, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It. it so I. I just went back to Sill commenting. It's, it's like Kaladin saying, "This is Oathbringer chapter one twenty one." Uh, it's true. Then he finally said about the Parshman that this was their land, their world before we arrived. That. That we were the void bringers? She nodded. Odium is the void, Calden. He draws in emotion and doesn't let it go. You, you brought him with you. I wasn't alive then, but I know this truth. He was your first god before you turned to honor. I guess I had always been headcanoning that there were human void bringers that had some sort of Odium related abilities. And I think hmm. there still could have been, but we, I just don't think there's any evidence. We have anything yeah. that specifically points to that. True. Yeah, yeah th- that's totally yeah. fair. Yeah, I have a crack theory really quick, but okay. I'm just going to throw out there All since right. we're on it. So, talking about pre-Ashen, you know, Ashen Surge Binding, what did that look like? What could that be? Uh-huh. I wonder if even still it was accessed via the Spren, but just much more informally. Because the way Syl kind of talks about how what she does is just an agreement between friends and she can, you know, she can convince things to stick or she can kind of, you know, bend a few rules. And so I wonder if spren like entities, perhaps even the void spren, were capable of interceding with the surges and the humans were interacting with them in some way. On Ashen. Uh, that is, on Ashen. Mm-hmm. And maybe even the void spren we see now that look like humans were those void spren. And then later it was codified that certain spren interacted with specific surges instead of most of them being able to kind of do whatever they wanted, potentially. Huh. I don't like Ashen having Spren, 
I don't know why in my head I'm like, eh, that feels I I just don't like that. I think I'm looking forward to seeing what Ashen Magic is like because I want it to be different to Roshar Magic, and so having them access it by like being friends with Spren, I'm like, oh, it's just the same on a different planet. I'm like, mm-hmm. can I, mean, I read? It could be. Let's can just I purely read, write uh, a line really quick and like it's definitely not a, like it. a lock, but they came from another world using powers that we've been forbidden to touch. Dangerous powers of Spren and Surges. So they might just associate those powers with the Spren already, but in yeah, some yeah, way yeah, the Spren are associated things. with this. Yeah. yeah. God, there's so many. Like the first Herald flashback that we get, and it's like 7,000 years ago on Ash, and I'll be like, oh my God, this is incredible. <laughs> like that is going to be just insane. Brand, Brandon's going to invert it, and he's going to start with the most recent and go further back, so he leaves all the juicy stuff for the end. Is what's <laughs> to be happen. honest, I can <laughs> totally like, believe oh. that, and I'm actually kind of okay with that. Like, I don't know. I mean, I, I think there's a lot of juicy stuff on either end yeah. of the Herald story, right? Oh, for sure, mm-hmm. yeah. I could also see him playing around with the flashbacks a little more. Like, the fact that he waited so long with Venleys and the way that he's been tying mm-hmm. them more directly into the story where mm-hmm. it seems like people are yeah, yeah, actively yeah. reflecting on them, like, it could be heralds having flashes of madness and like thinking about their past and just out of order, you sure. know? Oh, like, yeah, yeah. That's, 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 true. It. that's totally. I've true. said before that I kind of I could see the herald one or maybe even both the herald books being more flashback than current events, and I think that would be mm. interesting. Oh, that! Wow, yeah. that's that's. I mean, there's <laughs> a be, lot to talk about. <laughs> like, there's a lot to talk about with those herald flashbacks. <laughs> there's, there's there's a lot to do, like. It's like it's all town flashbacks, but no town main character in present time. <laughs> <laughs> Just es- establishes a secret duology within this ten book series, where it's like, oh yeah, you know, there's also the the you Ashen, the Ashen novella. Novella. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, the, the the two Ashen novels, yeah. I mean, going to like the the aspect of the Spren and like what you're almost saying, David, is that the Spren. Before Honor Bound the Surges, most any Spren could do surgy related things in interesting. Mm. Mm. That, that's interesting to me because it at least surprised the heralds that the Nahal Bond could form, right? So yeah. I don't know how, like, if Honor Bound the Surges. To be accessed through 10 specific types of spren. Mm-hmm. It almost stretches plausibility that the heralds wouldn't know about it. But mm, Honor might just not have told them. Like, who knows what the relationship between the heralds and Honor is like, right? Well, I'm I don't, fine well, with the Nahel Bond being a, a natural manifestation that Honor didn't specifically create. Yeah. You know, yeah. It, it, like, I think the Nahel Bond has to do with like the fundamental pairing of surges. Right. Mm. And so when Honor bound the surges, he he essentially said, well, the surges, they are now these explicit abilities or sets of abilities. And also here are the honor blades that can access these abilities. And then these ten that these two pairs of surges, these are the natural ways for them. And so fast forward some decades, centuries, who knows how long, and there are specific spren that are like i am uh, let's say there, there's some honor spren out there somewhere is like i am looking at this jezrian guy and i am and i'm looking at the things that he's doing and it's speaking to me on a spiritual level like i can do the same thing this is there are similarities between the the creature that i am and this powers that he's doing like I don't want to say the word resonance because that has <laughs> yeah <laughs> it has baggage yeah, in the it does, yeah. it does. but like huh. another spren could not have done that and huh. so it is yeah, not yeah. necessarily that honor said okay honor spren will eventually be able to grant these abilities it was that these abilities were best reflected in the honor spread or this pairing yeah, of surges like with best. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess I always just kind of 
And it's probably like not even a trustworthy source because it's coming from the in-world words of Radiance. But there is like mm-hmm. one of the epigraphs where they talk about, and this would have been later, like if they had to add oaths or like, you know, the weird Nohadon right. stuff. But they're talking about the stru- how they had to structure the powers and how right. by necessity things would be like this. And like yeah. they made, they decided on each bond's placement. And so there's a part of me that wonders if it might have all been just a little more fluid at one point mm. about what could mm. interact with what search is. Yeah. It's- it almost sounds like honor binding the surges, whatever that means, seems to be like in the same moment that honor created the honor blades, right? Because like he's giving, he's saying this honor blade grants these two surges. None of that other fluid stuff. These two. Here you that's, go. I that's know. kind of what I was thinking, but then I kind of, I see the Honor binding the surges as something that happened way before well, the I mean, creation of the heralds. Well, I mean, which is why I was asking if the honor blades have been around beforehand. But oh, I see, I see what you mean. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think they gotta happen after Ashen's destroyed. I don't know. Um, I don't it know. it <laughs> depends on how many how many bindings you think there, <laughs> there are. Was. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's the thing as well. Yeah, like, there seems yeah. to be at least two, debatably three bindings of the surges i i think you can make the <laughs> argument for anywhere between one and three yeah yeah so i don't know i think there's definitely at least two but i but like i see what you're saying uh here here's here's a great joke that i know uh Evgeny's not gonna like each binding is one of honor's 10 purposes oh no <laughs> there, they go. there you go there's 10 you bindings can't. You can't just throw purposes in every conversation that's marginally related to the number 10 <laughs> sure we can. It says sure you. Can. Maybe, maybe there's one three. Ten, maybe one there's one. ten. You don't know. It's, ten's important. Yeah, one maybe for each one of gas the purposes. Giant. Each purpose is in a gas giant. Makes sense. Oh, no. That's why yeah. we need to go to space <laughs> to find them. That's why you need to, a wind runner unchained to go to the visit the gas giants. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> Just flying <laughs> off the rails, <laughs> going off a cliff into the water. That's what we're doing. There we go. I got a random thought to share. Go for it. Go for it. I'm just going to put it out there. Wouldn't preservation. The oh, right. Preservation. Changing what mistings were born or created is very similar to the restrictions on or put on search yeah. binding. Oh, yeah, I was thinking similar things. And right, things might have, and Seizade might not have even had to have undo anything if that shard dying kind of like, mm, you know, like maybe preservation died and that just kind of was ending. And Seizade was like, oh, that was something the, the other guy did. Am I being really dumb? When did preservation change the amount of mistings that were being born? There, not the amount. Which mistings were born for which metals? Because ATM mistings were born, and ATM mistings are no longer born because there are okay. the sixteen base metals are now what types of mistings are born? ATM mistings no longer being born. I do not believe so. Oh, that's that's not a wob though. Do you think there are ATM mistings being born for a metal that's inaccessible? I, I guess. Oh, oh, sorry, we're really off topic this, now. This, this, if, but yeah. No, no, sorry, we're doing sorry, this. Sorry. We're doing this now. If, if alum, uh, aluminium or what's the other one? Uh, the one that's completely useless. If those guys still that get to be born, aluminum. Is, yeah, yeah, if, if aluminium mm-hmm. the mistings can still be born despite being completely useless, uh, I don't no, see why it, ATM. It's, it's it's actually a deeper question as to what preservation very specifically did to cause atium misting swarming. Like, yes. were were there cadmium and bendeloy mistings being born, but because the metals were hard to find, that they, no one knew of them? I think there's a lot of questions that we don't know about that. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, listeners. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I would like I would like to give a recap to our listeners because this is yes yeah please and please this is like decade old stuff that we're talking about here like so, literally two thousand nine. <laughs> um, a lot of the plot of Mistborn Era One hinges on the fact that Atium Mistings are exactly one sixteenth of the population. Like this was yeah. kind of the message that preservation. Uh, not of the population of the of all of the allomancers. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, it, this was the message that preservation was trying to send, like down through the centuries. Uh, like obviously he couldn't uh, like leave a written record because ruin could change that, and so mm-hmm. he was looking for natural laws in which to pass down 
the whole plan to burn away Ruin's body and things like that. And so that plan relied on people realizing that a- that ATM mistings exist yes. and that ATM is Ruin's body and that ATM mistings could just burn Ruin's body and foil his plan to return. Right. And so the the core concept of this plan was ATM mistings were going to be 116th of all mistings and 116 was important because there were 16 medals except we now know that there were more than 16 medals at the time and so how was preservation's whole plan going to work if like people had known that there were 18 types of mistings or 18 alimentic medals uh like what was preservation's fail safe to make sure that people don't discover these additional medals and and there was hmm. a wob from 2009 and we were we were trying to find this a few years ago david about like <laughs> yes. the preservation uh switching of medals and the best we can find is just a question that i asked brandon that could have just been my head cannon in 2009 about like oh preservation switched it with cadmium and bendeloy on the table and so that was the premise of my question and like brandon like doesn't really like talk about that specifically so it's like it's it's unclear mechanically on what preservation did like did those other alamancers still be born but God, yeah, yeah. he just chose the he just thought cadmium and bendelite like, the, they probably won't figure that out or, or some crap or did yeah. or did those al- did those mistings actually not be born or like, were they God, not yeah. snapping yeah. yeah, I was gonna say in my head for uh, some reason I thought it had been retconned into this mist only snapped well, the exact amount of ATM mistings to send message, but I don't know if that had been retconned or wobbed. What? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, for some reason in my that? head I was like, it, it's not the amount being born because you can't control human humans being born. It's it's the mist that he controlled, and the mists were only snapping one sixteenth of the amount of mistings there are. ATM mistings. Well, they are creating potential where none exists because none of these people could ever have snapped. So, kind yeah. of, yeah, yeah. Re- regardless, what we regardless. do know, <laughs> preservation <laughs> did something to make Atium mistings exist, stand out and exist. Yeah. Also, sure. I want to recant something earlier. Okay. Uh, it's not aluminium mistings that are useless because they can burn away uh, invading. Vestiture in the body. Oh, it's Nicrosil. it's dural- duralamin mistakes oh, that are completely useless. Oh well, they're both called. <laughs> they're good, the they're good for a spike, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> so, so ve- veering us. I, I like. I did like that this was brought up, David. It's just. Yeah, uh, I, it it turns out there's a crap load of baggage to go along with with that. But like, yeah, there is things that shards can do to magics. Like s- harmony can. Like he changed snapping. We have no idea how. Like, but he just did. And mm-hmm. so there, there's definitely things shards can do to magics. I, I just wonder how much could honor do to surge binding with an opposing shard also meddling in surge binding in a sense, right? With yeah. with odium, like because the destruction of Ashen. Odium's doing crap there, and like, how how much can even be done? I don't know. Yeah, I I think the destruction of Ashen was a result of like pre surge binding access to the surges. And yes, so I agree. Yes, Odium yes. Odium could have granted that much more directly, and so it wasn't that there were. Ashenite surge binders or Ashenite void binders, because there was nothing being bound. Also, what does it mean to bind the void is an entirely separate conversation. <laughs> Chris, how do you know about void binding? <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, no, it's not a separate conversation because I like that topic much better. Is <laughs> is void binding like a reference to the fact that Odium, who is the void, was bound by the powers of honor and cultivation, and therefore void binders are like people who are accessing the power of Odium directly? So instead of accessing the surges, 
they access odium. Yeah, sure. Why not? It, it, it definitely could be. Like, I <laughs> think it's that odium related. I don't, you know, it, it, like what sure. you said just sounds like accessing fused, odium yeah. stuff directly. <laughs> like, isn't that just what the fused are? Uh, and if fused you know, are not void binders, I will die on this hill. No, 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 no. no. I, I, I agree. Fused yeah. are not void binders, David. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying oh, what gotcha. Argent said sounds like the fused. And sounds because like fused, I don't agree that the fused are void binders, that they are surge binders, I therefore do not agree with what Argent said. I, I, I thought I was hesitating weakness there. Or I was sensing weakness there for a second, Eric. I was like, no, we don't give on this. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> ever, ever since uh 2017 uh, people people adding void binder to fused no you don't know uh, <laughs> it is, i know it's a, a staff policy of the 17th shard that you cannot believe there <laughs> <laughs> the, the interesting thing with that well not not actually not really related to that but, but related to void binding <laughs> is that there's the 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 void there's the chart with and there's 10 things yep the, like, made the that. ten levels. The ten levels. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the ten yeah, like void surges or whatever the crap that means. We don't know. Don't no, know. no. Chris says the ten levels of void binding. Yeah. Oh. Well, sure, but like, the, the, they, they're <laughs> taking the spot of the surge icon. <laughs> you, yeah. you know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I like and like it blows my mind that somebody made that chart. Like that's an in world. Yeah. Somebody at some point understood enough about. <laughs> void binding that they're like oh. we're gonna lay out these symbols <laughs> no it could be it could be a future thing it could be a future I, thing this book here I, has yes it's it. made of stone though isn't it like isn't it supposed to be like an archway like in world like i thought it, i never got the impression that this is a future void binding graph it it this book here is hero of ages and it has a diagram in it from the future of hero of ages wait what do you mean <laughs> Oh, he's talking about the completed the table in the back. Oh. Uh, <laughs> do we know that, have... that, that that's the, that far in the future? I don't think oh, I we know about... when that was specifically made. <laughs> I thought you were talking about the alimantic, like the 16 metal oh, actually, all three table of them. in the yeah, back. All three but... of these have future charts yeah, in Yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah. yeah. But, okay, okay, yeah. So that's not It's made of stained no glass. One. I don't think they're making stained glass winding windows of void binding in the future. They're making like electronic. No, 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 no. See, no, uh, David. It's because Renarin's vision are that stained glass style, so it's, it's in the future. And maybe, oh maybe uh, a void binder just saw into the future and saw that chart and wrote it down. And they were like, oh, it. it's gonna be helpful. Easy. It's gonna confuse Easy. a lot of people one day. <laughs> so really, okay, screw I guess them. we're talking about void binding now. Um, it is. It is notable and interesting that so in Rhythm of War, when Renarin is about to share his vision uh, with Dalinar, yes, the one that Gliss captured, Renarin speculates that the things he sees are things that like Odium is not necessarily afraid of, but interested in. Hmm. And so, in th- I, I think this is one of the ways that void binding might be like c- connecting binding. to odium oh. not connecting to surges or something like that and it makes sense that a radiant spren which is c- a cultivation and honor surge binding granting surge binding given a little bit of odium allows you to bind odium's powers in the context of surges in the context of surges that, that, because it's still it's still a radiance right. print. Yeah, that works. But also regrowth just works normally. Well, but half of them normal. are still normal. Odium can't regrowth things, so you just get the normal one. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Powers. You know, yeah. you know what this podcast is really teaching us? The biggest lesson. There is so much we don't know about Roshar and magics in any way. We're yeah. book four, and I don't think crazy magic revelations are slowing down anytime soon. Yeah, there are so many questions about yeah. all this original. There, there's a great wob where someone talks to Brandon and they're like asking him some like really in-depth question. And he's like, well, you see, I'm developing this series of books designed to answer these <laughs> questions for you. And so answer forthcoming. And I, I really do think that Stormlight is like a book about what about magic systems and what can happen with magic systems. And that's just yeah. like mm-hmm. centerpiece. Yeah. And like the the 
the dangers of magic in a sense, mm-hmm. right? With the uh, radiance and stuff. I know exactly which one that is. That is um, because that was us and Eric and a couple of other people on Reddit asking about shards. And he's like, I'm writing these epic fantasies to yeah, discuss yeah. and explain right, new things. Right, I can't, right, right. Oh, that was the patch new things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, I remember that. That was, that was a good day when we just added 40 minutes to a show because Brandon responded more on Reddit as we were recording. Yep, that's true. Yeah. That's awesome. Wow. I don't know if I learned things, but uh, we, we, <laughs> sure, we sure raised questions. Uh, I still don't know what's up with that honors to surge. You know? <gasps> we didn't talk about stone shaping nearly as much as we wanted to. You know, that's fine. We'll do a stone shaping podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll do it, yeah. We, there, There's enough for that. Yeah, there was actually a lot in our outline about stone shaping. Did talk about, like, we <laughs> did talk about it. Yeah. That'll, that'll be another episode. You know yeah. what's weird about the honors truest surge stuff and adhesion? What that? There's an entire bondsmith spren that presumably is all cultivation granting this honors truest surge. It's just interesting. I don't yeah. know if that means anything, but it's it's just interesting. My, cultivation. Oh, go ahead, Ben. My immediate thought is that it doesn't matter what the spren is. It's just the power level of the spren and the bond created with that power level of spren gives you honor's truest surge. So if you bonded, I don't know, say for example, by Edo Mishram, you'd still be <laughs> you'd still I, be a bondsmith. I, I don't know. <laughs> there, there's a question for Brendan. If you are not there, well, you know, or with uh, Eric's favorite. <laughs> Which is my favorite. Yeah, I know. Cultivation being involved in search binding but only in kind of like tangential ways is very confusing to me like and just kind yeah. of like there are things like they talk about how war light is significant and the rhythm of war is significant for to me you know right and for sianat and the children of sianat from the rough breakdown of the chart i would say that to me is probably a lot more aligned with cultivation than with honor in terms of the, yeah. You know, the misspren are probably like, you know, if they follow the general patterns, you know, so I just always wonder cultivation kind of gets lost in all of this sometimes. And I wonder how she does her she stuff does. interacts with all of it. <laughs> I mean, it, it is just totally weird that like, ah, true surges are of both honor and cultivation, cultivation for life, honor to make the surge into natural law. Like. What do you mean cultivation for life? Like, what does that, what does that <laughs> yeah. mean in the context of surges? <laughs> what does that mean? So, I've actually been thinking about that throughout the episode, and I have an idea that I like. And it has to do with how the magical effects granted by the surges, like what those effects are, right? So if you look at something like wind running, which is not a canonical term, but we not can say all. that. Then it actually know what is. We mean. It is. Oh, is it? They, the word wind running is used several times in the books, and I hate it. They use it to mean <laughs> gravitation. <laughs> yep. <laughs> anyway, so if, if you look at something like that, or if you look at the power set of the Skybreakers, uh, both of which seem very honorary um, orders, their powers are very, they're very specific. They're very, like, bound by exact laws. Like, you... Are pumping power into you're pumping power into a basic lashing, and you do this exact thing that you can almost describe with a with a mathematical equation. But if you take something like stone shaping or regrowth, mm-hmm. you are not getting an exact effect. You are getting something that is very shaped by perception, very Sub- shaped by intent. Like it's in it's in some fluid. ways, it's more fluid. It's a, it's like a living surge. And so, oh no! Did, <laughs> yeah, no, no, yep, yep, yep. Mm-hmm. Regret, mm-hmm. regret, instant regret. <laughs> mm-hmm. like such living surge. There are bead and shades, Mar, that represents the surge itself. Well, I, I, I think living surges might be a thing that shows up in the books. Anyway, really? but it's um, the um, uh, the expression of the magic is much more fluid. It is mm. much more alive. 
Yeah. And so in in that sense, I think cultivation provides life to surges. And so something like adhesion doesn't have any because it is science and laws and rules and uh progression is it's it's still bound by rules like you, there's still limit to what you can do but it's a lot more eh, i'll just grow a tree yeah and like adhesion is probably the most fundamental of it not adhesion in the sense of atmospheric pressure which is a fun bizarre <laughs> like side tangent that exists for the wind <laughs> have vacuum. something right, to promise, do yeah. Seriously, yeah, seriously, but no. uh, but like adhesion in terms of the spiritual adhesion is the direct manipulation of connection, which is about as fundamental as you can get in the in Cosmere. The, yeah, so maybe absolutely. that's like that's really why it's honor's surge because honor is about that sort of thing, and he's granting direct access to this very fundamental power. But by, by the way, I I searched living surge uh, and there's there's no results. So oh okay, Thank well you. I'm glad. <laughs> like, uh, I was okay. actually I thought maybe yeah because if um. Where am I going with the words I'm saying? So That's a great question. Where are we going with any of this? <laughs> Don't they describe uh, Spren as living surges? Probably. Um, oh. If Honor turned up, so Honor and Cultivation turn up to Roshar, okay, no. and all these uh, Stone Age singers are talking about their nine surges, and Cultivation's like, oh look, they have a one about growing things. I'll just latch onto that. And then Honor's like, cool. Um, they don't have anything about connecting one thing to another. So I'm just going to make my own. There's, there's a I lot of premises in the statement you just made. Like, <laughs> can, you, can, you, can you run all of this by me again? Because you said Stone Age singers and like that conflicted in my brain with like Dawn singers and stone shaping. Like all of these compound words just crash. <laughs> what if we talk about Dawn charts again? Why don't we just mix that in there? E easy oh, yeah, easy. While we were talking, just the uh, dawn shard of the word bind just came up to my mind. Um, oh, God. You know, totally freaking <laughs> right. I like it. So, yeah, yeah. That's, 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 um, that's true. Yeah, just so when, when Conover and Cultivation turned up to Vershaw for the very first time, the singers living on the planet, and, and they are, call them dawn singers, call them happy fun time crabs. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> they... They turn up and they have a culture of nine surges because I don't know. It's Which a cultural a, thing. It, it's how they perceive fundamental it's how they laws perceive in the universe. The fundamental laws of the universe. And then cultivation is like, oh, I like the growing one. I'm just going to stick myself on that. And then Honor's like, oh, these guys don't know anything about connection. They've, they don't have an invented glue yet. They don't know about atmospheric pressure. They don't know anything about sticking things together. So I'm just going to make my own of Honor. Sticking things together. I don't know. I like, struggle no, I, to get I, these words out. <laughs> no, I can no, but I see what you mean. Like it definitely it's the least natural seeming surge out of all of them. Yeah. In my mind. But it's the yeah. least lifelike in a sense. Yeah. I also mm. find it somewhat inexplicable that honor and cultivation together create nine surges, and I'm like, that's Odium's thing. So where's the nines coming from now? Yeah, uh, it is a little weird. gas giants yeah. and just and just uh, I, I, I yeah. hate the nine thing. I, I don't want to look at numerology thing. anymore. I yeah. don't, don't trust any of it. <laughs> no. Well, I don't. I'm a mathematician. I don't like number theory. I know some do, but I don't. Uh, but don't, don't, don't get me started on some theorems. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll whip them out. Uh -oh. Rational numbers are overrated. Uh, but <laughs> Where's my I, shot of spy? I don't. I don't. Tau's better. Um, I yeah, don't necessarily guy. agree that the surges could even necessarily be specific enough to be counted. <laughs> that, oh, prior to them being like, like, it could be like very that. fluid. And so I'm not even sure if talking about counting the surges even makes sense. Necessarily. I like that. No, I like that because my image of like pre prehistoric uh, Roshar has the Bren and the singers dancing around doing whatever they want. With hundreds more, of different forms. more like power of creation than surges mm. per se. I bet, it, mm. I bet it was crab fun time or whatever you call it. That sounds really nice. Yeah. Crab paradise. It's yeah, my favorite paradise. theory. Yeah. Yeah. Then, then odium attacked. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> the nine uh, surges lived in harmony. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> then honor. 
the the <laughs> uncountable was... number of surges lived in harmony, and then odium came to attack, and then honor is like, odium yo, was let's like... let's make ten of these. Actually, that's, that's... no Od- odium turned up. Sorry, honor turned up, and he was like one surge to bind them. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have any final I mean, thoughts? <laughs> what? I, I didn't get to talk about the two remaining fused variants I want to talk about, but it's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about them all in a fused episode. Well, in yeah. detail. We'll uh, do a fused episode at some point. Yeah, this, uh, is, this has been a very abstract kind of <laughs> let's talk about things kind of episode. Are you saying yeah. surge binding is abstract and kind of weird, Evgeny? God, I, is that I, what you're I, saying? I wish, I wish Brandon Sanderson would write a series of books to explain <laughs> to all of these things to us. <laughs> if only. Man, that'd be great. Wow. Uh... Yeah, this this was a very you know before we recorded uh, we were recording this. I, I Evgeny yesterday is like I don't really have a clear idea what this podcast is gonna be, and it's like we got stuff to talk about, and boy we had stuff to talk about. <laughs> like that's the problem, well, isn't it? We 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 really that was that was that was not a problem for us to talk uh, in detail oh, yeah. about this stuff and uh, enjoy your uh, Ishar podcast and nestled in this <laughs> the minor void binding tangent. <laughs> oh, and and, and Alaman and preservation you know oh, stick yeah. that in there too it's, it's, it all totally belongs technically it's, everything could be surge binding technically maybe yeah to you asked the I, yeah yeah I, yeah yeah um i'm looking at our outline um did we miss anything we sti- <laughs> boy did we um <laughs> we're probably gonna do a separate episode on stone shaping it, it just has to be um yeah, yeah. yes oh, we we couldn't fit all of it in here um a separate episode on Ishar yep, and just like just yep. just on Ishar and Ishar. like everything Ishar. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, we didn't talk about the suppression favor also. Oh, all, good. So Josh will be very happy about that yeah. because he I was kind of yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. So yeah, I guess we also didn't really talk about uh Fabrials in relation to surge binding at all and like and any of that crap, but uh We'll do a Fabriel episode or three. I don't know. There'd probably be a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, Joff will decide about that. <laughs> yeah, he, he he will. So that that'll be some time. Let's let let's just go on to who's that cosmic character. I don't know what we're doing anymore. Uh, do do we have any other final thoughts, David? Sorry, it just looked like you were going to say something, and I didn't. Oh no, I'm trying off. to think. No, no, you didn't try to cut me off okay, at all. Okay, I, my cool. final thought is I. I'm excited to learn more about surges. In a Me future too. Book. I like how in depth the magics are, and I really hope, like, we got a ton in Rhythm of War, and yet we're like, wow, we they, we don't know anything, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And keep an eye out for Dalinar summoning the Stormfather as a shard blade during the duel in Book Five. Calling I'm it. Sure, now. that'll go great. He's the Stormfather's yeah. liked it every time Dalinar's done it. Yep. <laughs> Yikes. Um, my only final thought is that I wish we had spent a little bit of time on Fabrials because there are interesting connections in, in the way like Fabrials interact with the magic on Rashar. Uh, we also didn't talk about uh, flora and fauna, also like yeah. forming bonds, bonds with Spren, yeah. and bonds are kind of a critical component of surge binding. So I don't know, maybe maybe we'll do like surge binding episode three, the surges strike back. Yes, I mean, nice. yeah. Uh, th- this is this is definitely a podcast that, like, after book five, let's talk about surge binding again. What did we learn here? It's let's like, see. hey, there's Carol, there's lots of cool surge binding, void binding, recreants. Yeah, shard, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll do all of them Dull again. Singers. We'll do bottom Mishram and the recreants too. Uh, and we'll 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 just do Teravangian too. But there's there's going to be more about Teravangian. Easy. Yeah. Um, did did. Find a car show up. We'll find out. We'll we'll do none of those. We'll we'll just do all the same podcasts just again. And like honestly, we wanted to do this just because of the honors true surge thing and that Rebonial section. Like as soon as I read it, I'm like, this is a podcast topic. I don't know what we're going to talk about, but like there there seems to be a bunch. <laughs> yes. So, well, stay stay tuned after book eight when we, we maybe we learn something about this and be like, hey, so this is surge binding seven. Uh, go listen to the other six first. Yeah. And then we'll, we'll we'll talk about. Oh, don't one. because they're all wrong. You know, they're all wrong. Knows? Yeah. <laughs> they're all wrong. Hey, remember back in 2018 when we talked about surge binding and we said this one thing? Well, it is now 
24 years later. <laughs> and we called it. We did. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm sure there will be some very amusing quotes uh, 20 years from now on this show. Look, if the Honor Blades do end up being the physical representation of Honor binding the surges, I'm going to be happy. That's okay. the- <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Let's let's go on to who's that Cosmere character. This character is from Roshar. Menace. Tia Tom. Braze. Void in drag on a horse. <laughs> it's time for Who's That Cosmere character? Caw. So, welcome to Who's That Cosmic Character, the game show where you guys send in five clues and a character to WTTC at 17shard.com. And I uh, I read off the. I got the five clues this time. (laughs) Um, Not nine, not ten. (laughs) Five clues. Five. Five. This is the Warbreaker game. Um, (laughs) (laughs) um, And then these, I read out the five clues one at a time to these guys. They try and guess who the character is. And if they get it, then they win. And if they don't, then they suck. And then you guys at home win. And Ian's not here, so we will actually get some points here. Oh, yeah. Right. I'm like, here we go. Let's go. (laughs) So, uh, character number one was sent in by Lyriel, who's not on Discord or the forums, but they do enjoy our podcast on YouTube. Oh, I'm sorry. Hi, Lyriel. Good. YouTube's the best uh, place to listen, I think, because we get money. <laughs> thank, thank you for your ad revenue and or yes. uh, YouTube Premium. What do they call it now? Yeah, yeah no, it's YouTube I don't think we do that. Yeah, YouTube, YouTube Premium. YouTube Premium's actually really good. You get to background play and download stuff. Highly recommend. I don't watch any of the YouTube Premium shows. They moved totally away worth. from YouTube Premium. Huh. It, it it's it's great, and it's great if you have YouTube Premium. This, this week's sponsor is ourselves and our ad revenue. <laughs> They're not going to give us more money if you talk about it, Eric. <laughs> Look, no, but they could buy no. YouTube Premium, and then they would, because what happens with YouTube Premium is that like the longer you watch, the more the content creator gets. That's actually oh. how it works. Oh, I, I meant YouTube directly, but that is, that oh, is yeah. fair. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Let's YouTube, if you guys this. need need some advertising... We're here for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool, right. Clue number one. This character is a fighter. Ishar. <laughs> it's not Ishar. <laughs> they didn't they... all start as warriors, but they became a yeah, whatever. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think this is, it, this is still probably pre-Rhythm of War, maybe. Yeah. Probably. Um, I'm going to um, say Moresi, because I've been listening to the audiobooks, and now I don't know how to say any names, but Moresi. Whoa. Wait, is that how yeah. they say it in the audiobook? They say it like it's Mare, because that's oh. I think that's what her name is supposed to be kind of. Oh, because Matt says from. Marisai. Oh, God. I say oh. Marisai, yeah. I would know. I was like, who the I say Marisi. Marisi. Are you saying? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've been listening to the, to the audiobooks while I drive. Yeah. Uh, I can't, can't you guys wait for our Era 2 podcast when we reread that and we pronounce every name wrong and the audiobook listeners are very upset? Um, you're welcome I, from the past. To be fair, well, I think that's... everyone is going to be very upset. That's true. That's true. I well, mean, you, yeah. you guys will say Wayney, right? Exactly. Get out. Yeah. Get out of here. I prefer not to speak of him. No. <laughs> Um, Adolin. It is not Adolin. Did we all guess? Mm-hmm. No. No, David's yeah. not guessed. Oh, David, I did. Guess. I said Maracy. <laughs> oh, sorry, it's not Marisai. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I forgot to reply. <laughs> um, clue number two. This character is from Roshar. Maya. It is not Maya. It's bold for you to assume that it's actually a post rhythm of War 1. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to say well, no, I'm not assuming that. David? What I said Niter. David. Niter. Who? Yes. He is the Niter? captain. He is the head of the Cobalt Guard, and clearly the right answer based on your apologies. <laughs> it is. N- it is not Nida. Yeah, yeah, it's N I T E R. Yeah. He, di- he oh, died. He died in the Battle of the Tower off screen. Oh, so you're I getting a very person. prominent character. <laughs> <laughs> Kaladin. <laughs> not Kaladin. Damn. <laughs> I don't know. Clue number three. This character. Has a son. Dalinar. It's not Dalinar. Is it Jam? 
It is not Jam. Why do you keep using characters that I'm like, who? <laughs> because because his son is the guy, the kid who beats up Calden with the quarter Isn't stuff. I don't Joss? actually remember. If it, yeah, oh, it's Joss. No, Joss is a kid, but his dad it's is Jam. jam. Yeah, 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 sorry, yeah. Way, We spend an inordinate uh, amount of time talking about the waste scum skirmishes here. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, we need to do a waste scum skirmishes podcast. <laughs> We only have like one word of Brandon. Uh, we only have one line about it. I'm sure it's very interesting. We can probably get through that in less than half an hour. Yeah, <laughs> that, that'll be in our next Vax episode. Cosmere yeah. Mysteries. What are the way scum skirmishes? Also uh, Vax. Tanalan. It is Tanalan. <laughs> Which <laughs> Tanalan? Which is <laughs> Tanalan Senior? But yeah, like, the, can't, the it can't. It has to be. It has to be. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's acceptable. It is Talon Senior. Uh, clue number four was this character dies off page because technically he dies off page. Yep. And uh, clue number five is this character carried Oathbringer. Hmm, mm, nice. nice clue. Uh, that, that's that's good. I like that. I like that. Even okay, the last clue, which narrows it down, also is a bit of a troll. So I like it. Yeah, I I could have used a first name on Tanalan and his son. I I would have preferred that in the book. That's just an opinion. <laughs> I, I don't <laughs> like how the Alethi sometimes refer to like nobles and high princes specifically by their princedom oh, or vice versa. Now. Yeah. But why wouldn't you say like Prince Meridas is Sedius? Like, yeah. I, I hate it. The, the Alethias are so dumb with names. Like, it is <laughs> unbelievable how dumb they are with Everything names. Everything surge binding. <laughs> everything's surge binding, everything everything's Sadius, everything's chicken, everything's wine, everything is Roshar. Off or Kremlings. <laughs> mm-hmm. Cool. Uh, I have a second character here sent in by Honest Cake on Discord. Mm. Clue number one this character does not have shin eyes. <sighs> Watch it not be a Rosharan. Like, what if he has no eyes? <laughs> shy. It is not shy. I'm gonna go with Kai Garnus, one of the Thunder class in the battlefield. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is not Kai Garnus, one of the. Doesn't have shin eyes. <laughs> that for sure. <laughs> now I wish I could remember the name of the other Thunder class. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? You know what we need in book five? We need some freaking thunder class. There are no thunder class. Yeah, yeah. They were they I were on vacation it. for that entire sequence. Don't They're worry. Like just beating up Tyna in the Reshi Sea. Uh, <laughs> not in your theories. Kai, kaiju battles. Yeah. Dude, that sounds awesome. That does sound good. Can we get a novella about that? That sounds amazing. <laughs> Between Stormlight 6 and 7, Eric, it's coming. Oh, excellent. With all the void binders. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so no shin eyes. Uh, I'm going to guess Vin. It is not Vin. Uh, clue number two. Either. She doesn't. This we character... Oh, I mean, so I guess she, she might. She, yeah, she could. I, yeah, she, she could, she could totally have shin eyes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Clue number two. This character has interacted with world hoppers on screen. Felt. It is not felt. Someone who interacted with felt. <laughs> is it? Is it his named wife whose name I am forgetting? Oh, I know her name. I know her name. I know her oh, name. Oh, it's something with M. Yes, it is. Yeah. It's Mala. Do you want to guess that, David? I like to guess Mala. <laughs> it is not Mala. Damn, <laughs> that's good. Uh, is it Vivenna? It is not Vivenna. Mm. Clue number three. Mm. This character was present during the Battle of Thalen Fields. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Oh, uh, Why is the name of the other Thunder class? Has, has, has the Thunder class interacted with the World Hopper of E-Tech? I mean, they, they all are. Is it Ash? It is not Ash. The Thunder class is a World Hopper, technically. <laughs> mm, right, uh, from Rays. That's true. Okay, wait. Just to clarify, because I've now got myself so confused. Is the first clue that they do have shin eyes or that they do not? Is that have they shin eyes? do not have okay. shin eyes? That's why I got confused. I got confused about what it was. The, the Vin gets yeah. to make too much sense now. Uh, okay. At the Battle of Thalen Field, Talm? It is not Talm. 
the other Thunder class from the battle. <laughs> I would have liked to name, but I'm not going to. So I'm going to give I, you. I that, legitimately do not... not remember the name of that Thunder class. Uh, See, I think I feel it's like on the tip of my tongue. I know it. it's like because it's not. I, I remember it's not double barreled because it's not. Yeah, it's like with a uh, Y or something. I'm gonna something I'm gonna like look that. it up if that's okay. Go for it. But it's not them either. <laughs> okay, um, cool. Clue number four. This character has been in combat with the assassin in white. Oh, the the thunder class is Yusha. There you go. Start with a Y. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, it's been in combat. Sorry, what was the clue? I was looking for something. <laughs> the clue number four him. is this character has been in combat with the assassin in white. Is it lift? It's not lift. Is it in combat against in the sense of with or in combat with with? He kills a lot of fused. Is it just Dalinar? It's not Dalinar. I'm taking that as your guess. Yeah, no, no. That, that is my guess. Yes. No, that's fine. Is it he, he was in Kaladin? Kaladin? What was that? I, I, I've forgotten all the clues now. I'm going to guess Kaladin. <laughs> it's not Kaladin. This is great one. I thought this one was good, and it is really good. I am um, amazed by, like... <laughs> it's how... so good. Oh! <laughs> the Thunder give me the next quest clue. in the preload Clue number of five. Five. Kings. This character is not Rasharan. Nightblood. It is Nightblood. Uh, <laughs> nice. 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 I love how you guys immediately went for like the Thunderclass and at Thalen Field. That was like the first thing out of your mouth. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> what, what even reminded me of that? Like, I don't even know anymore. Like, I, I love how specific a lot of the clues were. And yet, we're just like not nah. enough. No. I'm sh- like, I thought you'd get it. The assa- the clue number four, the assassin in white one. I thought you'd get it. That's that was good. I forget <laughs> about Nightblood sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a good race. one. Well done, uh, honest kick. Yeah, that was good. well done. I, I I I wanted to make uh, a joke about like the truest clue earlier but i couldn't fit it in <laughs> so i'm just i'm glad you're saying, saying it now. I, i'm doing i'm doing like insert joke here but yeah 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 <laughs> I, I, is it honor's truest clue well so that's that, like clue. i couldn't i couldn't find a good way to fit that in but maybe maybe i can say like the last one was honest's truest clue yeah uh, yeah it's honest cake honest cake bound those clues <laughs> yeah. ever since the destruction of ashen <laughs> <laughs> well, you 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 can find us at seventeenshard.com for all this stuff here and more and, and more this... for for <laughs> dubious amounts of fun. Dubi- well, this was fun. This was fun, right, guys? Arguably so. Arguably. Uh, you, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter. Listen to us on SoundCloud. You can leave us a review on iTunes. You can subscribe on YouTube. Get YouTube Premium. <laughs> Watch our show. Like us. Leave comments. Tell yeah, us down if you below leave comments, favorite. it gets recommended more. That's true. Uh, and ease uh, the algorithm. Yes, it's true. <laughs> and if you want to support this, uh, you can support us on Patreon. The link's in the description. Great. So we'll see you all next time. <laughs> <laughs> Outro. <Peace>. Bye. Call. <laughs> <laughs>